Welcome to the pro-black perspective where black problems are addressed with black solutions. Your host tonight is the author of the pro-black compendium and Zuberi and the Maroons of Ma'a, the pan-African nationalist Oni. Oni, what are we discussing tonight? Peace, 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 family. I uh, appreciate uh, the introduction. Obviously, that's Brother Koku from the Shoot the Breeze. Um, well, not from the, well, the Bit of Medicine podcast, and he does Shoot the Breeze. did it yesterday. It's good stuff. Um, uh, appreciate you, fam. Look, before we get started, let me tell you what's going on. We're going to be looking into Nkrumah's industrial policy. I have not read the article yet, so it's going to be, we're going to be walking through it together. Uh, if you've read it already, appreciate it. Uh, make sure you tell people come through because this is a live discussion and discussion is always better. Live discussions are always better when they're lively. So just tell people to come through. They could they could come and troll. They could come and, you know, come and ask serious questions because this is for the serious Africans. But I'm also going to show some footage from because uh, there was this question. I, the reason why I'm so late is there was this question on the Discord. So make sure you guys come through on the Discord where it was like, how can we uh, like we were talking about economics and. I want to show you guys a picture, a video of Tanzania that I kind of showed a little bit on Twitter. I kind of showed a little bit um, here on YouTube, but I want to show some of it again with, uh, with some commentary just to bolster. I'm, I believe it's going to bolster the article. I don't know because I didn't read the article. But before we get started, let me remind you that I'm part of a podcasting network called KWAZ Radio. This is D Webb with the Harsh Reality Podcast. Ask you to tune in where we tackle the news of the day that affects our community only on KWAZ Radio. Greetings, everyone. This is Koku from the Bitter Medicine Podcast, inviting you to tune in to the Bitter Medicine Podcast on KWAZ Radio. Greetings, fam. Tune in to The Learning Curve with me, the revolutionary matron on KWAZ Radio. You are listening to the pro-black perspective on KWAZ Radio. All right, so I don't know if you guys peep the uh, the new image. Uh, this, is this is for the pan-African multinationalist warship. So we just got to keep it red, black, and green. We got to keep it you know, soldiers and, and, and warfare in mind. Because cause realistically, that's what it's really about. Realistically, that's what it's always about. You know, um, so there's only... Now, there's, I, I decided to add onto my list, but originally I had a list of three white folk that I don't mind if folk is reading them, you know? One of them is Machiavelli, right? Machiavelli writes this book called Art of War. It's the European version. The other one's obviously Sun Tzu. He writes a book called Art of War, and the other one is St. Augustine, you know? Uh, well, I shouldn't call him St. Augustine, but you guys, yes, that's what they call him, right? Augustine, whatever, right? I mean, as a matter of fact, I don't give a shit about these words, right? But Augustine, St. Augustine, whatever. Uh, some people say he's from North Africa, I don't know. But uh, he, he has this really interesting philosophical idea, right? Where he says, look, there can be war without peace, Right? But there can't be peace without some kind of war. You know? Uh, or I might have mixed it up. I don't really know. But, you know, something along those lines of there can be war without peace, but there cannot be peace without some kind of war. As to say that your peace depends upon, realistically, your victory over other people's versions of peace or alternative versions of peace. And that's the thing you got to remember, too. Like, other people have alternative versions of peace. I'll give it a good example, in fact. I got this neighbor, right? Mother, this dude, I don't know, he got a new sound system, a new subwoofer, it's great, right? For him, up, you know, he's, you know, in his in his apartment, uh, just, or in his house or whatever, just, you know, right? That's his piece. But sure enough, the police showed up on him. I didn't, I didn't call him. You know what I'm saying? I, Gee, I don't know. I don't know the number to nine one one, right? <laughs> but like somebody called the police because they was like, "Look, even if that's that man's version of peace, right? Even if that's that man's version of peace, that ain't mine. And because that peace is not, they don't align, right? You got, you got, you got to bring in the violence. See, the police is the violence. 
right? They're the violence. They're, they're, they're the, oh, you're going si- to do what I say or else. You understand? And that, that's realistically, you got to remember that you are in a society controlled by violence. I want people to really sit down and, 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 and remember that you are in a society controlled by violence. And I'm not even going to say that you don't have to be. Like, unless you're in a society all your own, right? And even then, right, we just have to admit, you just have to admit as a human being, right, as a man, that you are, that you're, you're a violent creature. You know, and I say that, I say that, I say that because one thing I noticed, there's two things I noticed. One, if you, if you raise a beer, if you raise a beer, right, you raise a, 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 a male bear particularly, right? But you raise a bear from infancy. When it's a cub, you can be cuddly. You can be, uh, you know, you can be, uh, you know, whatever. Like, you know, you know, you open the door and it rushes and comes, gives you a hug. All that stuff. As soon as it gets to puberty, though, get that motherfucking bear out of your house. Okay? Because it will beat you up. And it's the same. And I'm going to tell you the truth. It might be the same thing with boys. You know, like my son, like I tell you, me and my son have this nice relationship. And I know this. I know me and my son have a nice close relationship. But what I'm telling you is that I'm fully convinced that when he hits puberty, right, the sudden I do to him, ain't going to be done. He's going to be like, well, look, man, the fuck you talking about? Fuck you want. Right? Or if I'm like, hey, man, you better get your ass inside the house before. Shut the fuck up, man. What you going to do? And that's, that's a little boy. For me, and, 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 and the thing is that we as men, we know this. Now, some men are going to tell you, hey, actually, my relationship with my father is pretty good. We never, you know, he never blow a blah. Or even they might say, well, my father just lays the hammer down and I just listen. Right? Well, then he, you're still being controlled by violence, if, if that's the case. If you're the latter case, you're still being controlled by violence. You just don't, you just don't man up in a sense. You know what I mean? Or you appreciate, or in other ways, you appreciate him as a man and you say, you know what? Even if I can take him on, it's okay. He's a man. And I'll respect him for that. That's fine for you. But here's the thing. That's your family. Now, extend that out of your family. And everything changes. Extend that out of your family and everything changes. Sorry, I, I, I should have uh, been showing the, uh, the chat instead of the thing. Uh, so, we got Matron here. Greetings to Matron. And, of course, we got Kofi here. Greetings to Kofi. Uh, but I, I want y'all to understand that as a context before we... Um, before we get into, uh, like, I want you to understand that as a context into the reality of violence and violence as a control mechanism, right? Because that's what you're going to have as a society. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys a video, right, of uncultivated land in Africa. Uncultivated land. And the thing is this, you can go on that land and you can produce a structure over that land, Right. That doesn't involve violence, but I'm just going to tell you straight up as a man, right? And I'm not saying that women are not violent, but I can only speak for my gender at this point. You know, I can't really speak towards other genders, right? But as a man, I'm telling you that you are going to set up structures designed around violence. You understand? You're going to do that. You're going to do that. And, and, And you just have to Get out of the mindset that get out of the the social preparation that other people gave you to make you think that that's a bad thing. Oh, you're a violent person. Yeah, I'm supposed to be. This is a violent world. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, and and, look, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's like even if you were not violent, even if you were not violent, if you were that person who's like, you know what? I have no violence. That's good for you. You are going to be killed. You know, in fact, I, I tell you guys, I, I tell you guys, one of the white boys, uh, I don't mind you guys reading this Machiavelli. Machiavelli says something really interesting. He says, look, only the armed prophets have been successful. Only the armed prophets have been successful. So as I say this, doesn't matter how much, how good your fucking idea is. Doesn't matter if you are spiritually enlightened in your own mind. You know, if you're like, hey, you know what, I've... I've spoken to the universe, you know? I've spoken to deities, you know? I've spoken to cosmological beings, interstellar, intergalactic, you know, things that created the universe type thing. I've done that. If you cannot defend yourself, you are just cannon fodder. You're, you're just, you're just, you're just, like, you're just cannon fodder. 
No one cares. I gotta turn off this uh this uh ringer by the way. You know? Wait. What the fuck? Hold on a second. Oh, okay, I thought something said I was <laughs> I thought something said my food about to be delivered. I'm like, hold on a second, I don't no damn food. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, the way they hustle you, boys. All right. Um, so anyway, I just want to give you guys that context because I want to show you this, 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 this. Let me first actually read some of the conversation on uh, on Discord. So I want you guys to come join the Discord. We have conversation there. Um, I mean, I kind of, you know, branch it off a lot. But I'll say it this way first. And I, I put some of this on Twitter, too. But I say, look, first off, this is the context, right? Nations should sell to other nations to add to their wealth, not subtract from it. OK, for example, I sell books, but I don't sell them from my library, but I sell XX books I don't personally need. Basically, I got a stack of the book of power and I sell the stack. I don't sell. You know, I have I have Marcus Garvey's message to the people. I don't sell a message to the people. Right. Because <laughs> what if I want it? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't sell like I got, you know, uh, like here, I got Nessu Betty. Right. By Asamo Tep. I don't sell that. That's what I, that's my book. I have the book right here, New History of Tanzania. I don't sell that. I have that. What I do is if I have this stack of the Book of Power, and I don't literally have a stack of the Book of Power. You know, you obviously bid it offline. But the point is, I'm not selling I'm not selling to subtract from me. I'm selling to add to me. So, so I wrote that. I said, look, not for my library, but excess books I don't personally need. My book sales add to my wealth, not subtract. Because, see, when if I'm, if I'm giving away my – if I'm selling my books – I mean, sure, you could be like, well, the value that you exchange it. No, 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 no. Right? If, because even if it were the truth that I was selling at the market value, right, then I'm not actually adding to my wealth. Especially if I want it. If I need the book, then I would just have to buy the book again. I'm not really adding to my wealth. What happens is that if I have an excess amount of book, now, obviously, if I sell the book at a high, higher than market price, then sure, you can say I'm adding wealth. That's fine. Right? But again, just focus on the, my book sales add to my wealth, not subtract. And I say, look, your first duty as a nation is to meet your own needs and then sell, right? First duty is to meet your own needs and then sell. So we're going we're gonna to go into a little bit of a... So in the current events, I think I linked something that was... Uh, and somebody had some... Like one of these guys had a, a bad opinion. And I, I uh, uh, you know, on Twitter... And uh, I, I, showed, I shared it on uh, the Discord, and then we had a little bit of a conversation around it. So I'm going to go into it just a little bit. I'm going to try to skip through some of it. But basically, some white woman is bragging about creating the diamond in a lab, okay? She's like, I created a diamond in the lab. And so this, other, so this black man says, well, there goes Botswana's economy. They have had decades to move beyond diamonds, though, but didn't bother to take immigration policy seriously or become less xenophobic. They'll be poor in 20 years than they are now, right? Hater, right? Okay, that's fine. But I say, look, economics of selling to whites isn't economics but per servitude. So another brother comes in, capital thrice, he says, look, industry dependent, right? Uh, pulling materials from the ground and selling it isn't sustainable, but levering materials sales into commodity production may be. Also, that guy really has anything positive or constructive to say regarding Africa, right? So he's like, look, man, selling the, 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 resource, the material from the ground isn't, isn't it? But selling the products. But I said, look, this is the thing too, because even selling the products is good. Selling the products is good, it is. But I want you to understand that you have to first meet your own needs. You have to produce the goods for yourself, and then with the excess, you sell those. Because you, you, it's it's the one. I mean, we'll, I'll go into it later. I wrote it down, but it's like it's the one man's trash is another man's treasure. So I'm gonna keep reading. I say selling is good, but you should be able to get by without selling. Selling should add, not subtract. You know. So uh, another brother, Kanku, you know, points out the threat is quite defeatist for no reason. Plus, it isn't well known that diamond industry is basically a scam since the beginning of the 20th century. He shows us links about that because, you know, we all know it's a scam. And so I say, look, I finally watched The Woman King. There's a scene where Viola Davis says, let's trade palm oil instead of humans. Right. You know, and again, this is like fanfare. You know, like I finally watched the movie. I'm like, damn, this is fanfare. But <laughs> but she's like, let's trade palm oil instead of humans. And I say the Portuguese and the Portuguese, they reject it. They're like, hey, why the fuck would we want palm oil when we want palms? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, and I said, that's the real world. No one needs to buy what you're selling. So do not design your economy around selling to anyone. So Kanku asks, and how do you design your economy? I say, look, a nation wants to be independent, then exchange its excesses. Like America trades excess cars, not all of its cars. You get what I'm saying? Just like I don't sell, I don't sell my books, 
I sell my duplicates. You get what I'm saying? I send my duplicate books. I do not sell my books. Okay? I sell the duplicates. Because I don't need the duplicates. I sell the, the digital copies. Because that doesn't, that doesn't take from me. I don't sell the originals. You understand? I don't sell the rights. You know? Now, now, now I said, America you know, trades excess cars, not all of its cars. America mass produces cars to the point that selling them doesn't subtract from their wealth, but adds to it. And I'll have to explain this. I say, America doesn't have less cars by selling them because those cars that they're selling are trash. You're supposed to sell your garbage. One man's trash is another man's treasure. And I say, in agriculture, we see this as I have a mango farm that produces 80 pounds of mangoes a month, right? I only eat five pounds of mangoes. So me selling 70 pounds adds to my wealth. It doesn't subtract because I'm not going to do anything with 75 extra pounds of mango except for throwing them away. Because I can't eat 75 pounds of mango. Right? I mean, maybe I can. I don't really know the math of mangoes. But anyway, so I say, however, what we're doing is growing 80 pounds of cotton and not using any of it. You see what I'm saying? You're growing 80 pounds of cotton and you don't use cotton. You don't make cotton clothing. Right? So therefore, we need to buy five pounds of mango. And then we're screwed because we don't provide for ourselves. Because here's the thing, right? If you need five pounds of mango and you have 80 pounds of cotton, you know what somebody's going to do? They're going to sell you five pounds of mango for 80 pounds of cotton because you can't fucking eat because you did not provide for your own needs. You understand? Agriculture is the basis. We're going to talk about that, right? So Kanku says, yeah, but the question is how to do it. What's the first step to have an economy in the different stages to reach modern levels? So I say, look, agriculture is the basis of all economies. Then town building. The other nations just destroyed the towns and the agriculture for resource mining, and we stuck around with it. The ride to my farm had a huge, huge, huge field of uncultivated land. I mean, 30 minutes drive on motorcycle. And so then I decided to um, send that video and I said, I del I'm delayed with the trying to apologize because I wanted to upload and showcase these. But look at the background. Acres and acres of undeveloped lands. It needs developers. It's not a question of can, but will. So I know I wanted to show you guys this industrialization policy. And hopefully it's related to the conversation at hand, right? But I'm going to show you the video. And like I said, if you wanted to follow on that discussion, you could have just, just, just joined the Discord. All right. So here's, here's, here's the thread I said about thing. I said, it's not a question of can Africans develop Africa, but will Africans develop Africa? Here's uh, video footage of, of just like, I mean, obviously I was taking a picture of the water, but like on the, I, well, I guess I'll have to turn the camera around. Hold on. So this is the ride towards, uh, like this is just uncultivated land, uncultivated land, just endless just endless i'm telling you this is this ride was like 30 minutes right look at the background this is me leaving the farm now you kind of hear me talking swahili ah, what do I got <laughs> all right boys but this ride is just 30 minutes See, like, again, you don't have to focus on me. So, what I want to say is this. Yeah, all right. So what I want to say about that, right, is that, you know, you might see me in the foreground and you're like, oh, man, this motherfucker's just talking Swahili. Yeah, I was. But what, what, I, what I want you to peep on this is that you, some people might be like, hey, you know what? That's not even land that I could use or something like that. Maybe. Maybe. Right. But when I got to the farm itself, vast amount of land that was cultivatable, like I don't know the word, fertile, let's say fertile. Right. That was fertile. So on the way to there, it's just it's just a matter, again, it's not a question of can Africans develop Africa. It's a question of will Africans develop Africa. Because, again, you need developers, you need the buyers, you need the people to say, hey, you know what, this is the fucking land I'm going to do. And I'm going to show you guys the town. The town doesn't look all that great. It's not supposed to. Because if you do not go out and develop something yourself, why would it look good for you? 
Why would it look good to you? Why would something suit your preferences if you don't go out and do it? You know, this is uh, one of the lessons that Marcus Garvey told us. Make sure you guys get a copy of Message to the People, right? One of the lessons that Marcus Garvey told was um, you can't hold people accountable to things you haven't taught them. You can't hold people accountable to things you haven't taught them. Now, granted, there are some social codes, some moral codes that you expect to already be done. But you know who you expected to give it to them? White people. You know? That's what you expected. You cannot hold people. You can't. We're going to look at the town soon. And you're going to be like, eh, the town. I don't want to live in that town. Okay, fine. You, you don't have, like, if, if you don't want, if you want whatever the white man's giving you, right, then just say that. What are, you, what are you on a pan-African nationalist channel for if you are happy with this white boy? If you are satisfied with him, why are you on the pan-African nationalist? Like, we are talking about developing Africa. Okay? And if, and if, and if you know that Africa is underdeveloped, then your role is to be a developer. Not to say, well, I don't know, I kind of like what the white man... If you like what the white man has, get the fuck off the channel. Period. Just get off. Go, you know, like, 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 like we don't, we don't need that. What we need is people who say, you know what? I see a lot of fertile land. I see a lot of mouths I can feed. That's what I see. Look at this. Look at this. And this is, this is not exclusive to this one region. This is, this is this is a lot of Africa. When you get out of the city, this is a lot of Africa. And all it needs is men and women to be like, hey, I'm going, I'm, I'm doing this. Again, this is like a 30 minute ride through just this. This is my farm right here. I was like, wait a second, man. That's all you're going to show me? Yeah, that's pretty much all I'm going to show you. But whoo, your man's got a farm. I know you're saying, wait, where's the crops? Yeah, get out of here, man. Nah, but hold up. I know y'all was like, wait a second, man. That's all so you, you see how you see how it goes all the way. So basically, you, you, you probably saw in the corner, there was some green, right? You see the green right here? Uh, so basically, my whole farm is all this black this black area, right? Um, now, the lighting is not that great. I'll give you guys that. Like, I have other videos with better lighting, but my thing is that I'm not trying to get the background. Like, I'm not trying to get the background details so that some motherfucker somewhere could be like, oh, I know where his farm is, and now I'm going to go do some shit. I'm going to go poison his crops or some shit. I, I don't need that kind of shit. I don't need that kind of energy. So uh, because of that, I was just like, let me surreptitiously just show you guys. But it's a pretty big plot of land. That's one. It wasn't that expensive, but it was. It, was, it cost me money, obviously. Uh, that's two. And uh, number three is this, right? Somebody had to clear this field. That's, that's what you got to realize. Human labor. Now, now, see what the West is. What the West did, uh, particularly America. What America did, and you know, actually, no, the Western Hemisphere generally is that they took Africans out of Africa, and said, "Look, you're going to develop this crop, and then you're going to produce um, crops that we're going to sell to Europe. To or we're going to we're going to manufacture, like we're going to add value to, and then sell to Europe. Okay. You don't have to fucking do that. What you could do." Is you could hire Africans, give them good, 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 good prices for, for clearing the field and working the field and all that kind of stuff. And then you manufacture whatever it is that we need. You grow whatever it is that we need. You manufacture whatever it is we need. And then you sell it to other African people. You don't have to, you don't have to manufacture it to sell it to Europe. Because that's what, that's, what, that's what the diamond thing, that's what the diamond conversation was about. The diamond conversation was about, hey, we, we, we're getting these diamonds out. So that we could give it to Europe and, 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 and oh no, we're screwed. And that's the thing. That's a lot of the conversation that a lot of black people have is how can we, because I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what Nkrumah is going to be talking about. Industrialization. To sell, to, you know, let's, let's produce cars and sell it, to, sell it to Europe. You know, Japan makes really good cars and we can make better cars in Japan. Yeah, you can, of course. But you don't have to sell it to the white man. I mean, if you have enough cars that you can sell it to the white man, then sure. But you do not have to sell it straight to the white man. You first have to provide for your own people so you don't have to. So, because cause see, it's like, so there's this man uh, in America, his name is Benjamin Franklin. A penny saved is a penny earned, right? Now, now this works in two ways, right? Uh, I'll, I'll give you that. But a penny, a penny saved is a penny earned basically means if you are not buying cars from white men. 
right? If you're not buying cars in Wazungu, then you're actually saving money. Okay? Now, granted, if Wazungu makes the cars cheaper, if he sells it cheaper than you can produce it for, then you might say there's some sort of uh, profit there, but not really. I want you to understand that not really. You know? And I'm saying not really, not just on the authority of, you know, myself. I'm saying this in the sense of when you read, because uh, I, I do recommend you guys read this book now. I'm not going to hold you. But uh, Wealth of Nations, when you read Wealth of Nations, he says, hey, you know what? There are circumstances where another country will have a manufactured good and they could sell it for cheaper. But a nation should take it into consideration. Is it worth not producing your own? Is it worth not developing your own economy? Like part of me feels like I should just take out some of the bullshit, you know, take out some of the excess, some of the fat out of that book and just and, and sell it to you guys so you guys could read it. Right. But it's 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 a it's a really deep question. And and the thing is that we're not really considering it. So I, I want you I want you to listen to this podcast. I want you to share it with other people, because realistically, we can we can go far if we just if we just pay some fucking attention. Here's the town. This is the nearby town. You can see it's a little dilapidated. But look, dilapidation don't mean nothing. If you're a developer, that just means, hey, you know what? I can get this for cheap. That's all it means. If you are development minded, all it means is that you can get it for cheap. That's all it means. It means you don't got to pay uh, New York prices. This is the town in the way. Like I said, town building is secondary. There was actually a village on the way too. I forgot to show that. Oh, maybe I could show that. I mean, I could upload that. But uh, no, I can't. I don't think I could look through. <laughs> I don't think I looked at my photos right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I looked at my photos right now, so maybe I won't do that. But there was a village. Uh, I took some videos of the village, too. Um, hold on a second. Let me actually... Uh, you know what? We gonna... Let me see. Making boot. Oh, Kobe says making big moves with the farm. You already know. You know, that's the only moves you're supposed to make. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna... We're gonna I'm gonna... I, I realize in retrospect, this is not the best rap in the world. But we're gonna, we're gonna listen to this rap, and then I'm gonna see if I can hold, show you guys what the village look like. Um... You know, off camera, right? <laughs> okay, so I know books, all right? So let me tell you about a book. All right, check it. So the goal and objective is to be selective, selective for knowledge with the black directive. Checking sources, heritage, and legacy with the ability to defeat our nemesis, the book of power. So after the name, the scene of fame, for performing the brain, and doing the same as the ancestors before us. Set hope and after the life for us. Wisdom is the key against danger. As a team, the leaders will lead to change. We are doing Africa with no strength. Do you hear us? Okay, hold on. We can't continue to be the second fiddle. African power is the end. To build a nation, the lights were never visited. The model here to score, we persisted. Better, we resisted. Better, we built it. We'll raise the roof and break through the ceiling. Killing the way that changes were given. To stop the surviving, start dropping and living. Africa's about to hold superpowers. China and US back up the top hours. No one can be free without freeing themselves. But freedom is shown and hold on bookshelves. The book of power, a key for liberation. There's no domination where there's education because ignorance is man's name. We exist all of the story. There have been the pages, the sages, kings and queens, Aqua Paul, Delaney, Desaline, Dan, Zinga, and Cook. 500 pages to pass the whole book. The task is told to bring up the continent. You will hold the tone for the continent. Have some fire and push forward the test. The leaders are reading one of the best. The book, book is science, covers violence, self reliance, and, and does away with silence. Time has come for the work to get done. And build up a land of We'll organize, acknowledge, strategize, and leave Africa before our eyes and blackness will be the complexion we see. Anytime we envision what it means to be free. So come join minds, read what is written, hear these solutions, no longer hidden. Nothing works in theory, all that works, works, and works. So, so it's, it's time, time to put ourselves first. Change the leaders and lead the changes. Tell your friends, family, and neighbors. Change the leaders and lead the changes. Tell your friends, family, and neighbors. Change the leaders and lead the changes. Tell your friends, family, and and neighbors, change the leaders and lead the changes. Book of Power. So the Book of Power can be purchased on Amazon. Just click on the link below. Alright? Send me an tap. To lend my eye, to shine is fat. To lend my eye, to shine is fat. To lend my eye, to shine is fat. Oh, tap.
classic, boys. Change the leaders and lead the changes. You already know. Um, wait, hold on a second. Let me make sure the screen is. <laughs> you know, I did all that. I started. Uh, you know, I started bobbing to my old song. I, <laughs> I forgot to. All right. Anyway, uh, so this is the village. Um, I was my. I don't know if my son was saying shit, but yeah, here's the village. So you see, it looks a little like uh, you know, eh, but at the same time, it's like, you know, again, this is just means labor. This just means cheaper labor. You know, this just means, hey, you know what? I'm good with with a hundred bucks. You know what I mean? That's all it means. That's all it should mean to you. You know, I'm good. I, yeah, I could clear this land for a hundred bucks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I could clear this for a hundred bucks. I could do that. That's all it means. Now, eventually, it might be, oh, well, I'll clear it for a thousand. Right? If, if you develop the country right, it might just mean, yeah, I might clear it for a thousand. But by the time they're like, yeah, I'll clear it for a thousand, you got... You got enough. Right now, what, what you're doing is you waiting for, you know, you waiting, like, it's getting, like, like, you, like, who are you waiting to develop that land? Who are you waiting to clear that land? Like, all that land I showed you before, who are you, who do you expect to clear it? So that, so that you could grow whatever crops you want. Like, let's say you want a bunch of mangoes. Let's say you want to get them 80 pounds or 8,000 or, 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 or 10,000 pounds of mangoes. Who do you want to clear the fucking land so that you could get 10,000 pounds of mango? Who do you want to gather 10,000 10, pounds of mango? Who do you want to do that? If, if not you or somebody you paying, how in the world are you going to get 10,000 mangoes? 10,000 pounds of mango? And, and, and it's, it's only for you to say to yourself, well, how much mango does the country require? And then you do the math. You do the math. Well, I, well if the country needs this amount of mango, then I need this amount of hectares. And if I need this amount of hectares, how much does the hectare cost in what part of the world? And, and, it, and it, there's so much, there's so much to do, but you got to understand that you have to go and do that. See, because you're not going to have the benefit of free labor like, like these other people did. And that's fine. You don't need free labor. You know, it might, it might be a little pricey for you, but we, us together, working collectively with a development mindset, it, it don't matter if it's pricey because you're going to profit. And your people are not going to be slaves. You know, in fact, I'll tell you guys, like, like, and that's the thing, that's the thing we gotta realize. You know, and I said this in Zuberi's. If you guys don't ever read Zuberi, right? If you guys never read Zuberi, now again, there's this one portion. I, I gotta go to the article. I'm not gonna hold you. I gotta go to the article. But there's this one portion of Zuberi, right? Um, and I might have to pull it out, right? Where Zuberi is like, uh, you know, he sees this beggar. He sees this beggar on the corner, and somebody says, "Why are you treating this beggar this way?" And Zuberi says, look, you know, realistically, whether you're working for the white man or if you're begging on, on the street, you're a beggar. You know, and, and this is what happens, like, you know, this brother showed me this video earlier, I think. He said, um, this, this sister was like, ah, the problem with the, you know, women in America, right, is that they're like prostitutes, you know? And the brother was like, you know, it reminded him of a conversation in Tanzania where I was like, you know, a lot of people engage in transactional sex, okay? Now, I want people to understand this, though. If you are not producing, you are begging people who are, directly or indirectly. Like I said, the person who has 80 pounds of mangoes on his farm, that's, he, he's good. His family is good. They're eating five pounds or whatever. I don't give a shit. I don't know. I don't know how much, you know, I'm just eating, but they're good. They're eating 25 pounds of mango. They are good. They're not begging anybody. They're, they're producing from the earth. But the other people are saying to themselves, how can I get their mangoes? And if you are not producing something, to give this man who's producing the mangoes, you are going to be, you're basically begging him. Well, uh, you know, I could, I could, uh, I could sweep your floor for some mangoes. Okay, well, sweep my floors then. You damn beggar! You're not doing nothing. And, and I mean, I mean, sure, you might be like, well, you know, sweeping the floor is not that bad. Sure, but you got to understand how small the economies are, to the point where a lot of people ain't doing nothing. A lot of people not doing nothing really. But, but working for this white boy, you know, and, 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 and that's the sad thing. I tell you guys, there was a story of this, uh, of this brother, the story of this brother who, uh, you know, in America, brother in America, who was shot and killed during that supermarket attack. And he, apparently he was a security guard. He was a security guard and he was doing his job, uh, you know, trying to protect the thing. Here's what this man was doing on his off time when he wasn't being a security guard. On his off time when he was not being a security guard. He was building an engine that ran on water 
and not fuel. Why is this man a security guard when he can build engines that run on water and not fuel? And I'm not saying that he could or couldn't. What I'm saying is that that was his interest. But because we do not, we are not a productive people. We are not a people who are supporting themselves, but instead are being supported by another people and pretending like it's otherwise. Right. If this man could be building engines, why is he not in the academy or in the engineering uh, department of some university or, 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 or some major corporation of our own black design? Why is he risking life and limb or sitting down idle just defending somebody else's property and dying by doing so? No disrespect to dying, but you understand. Because he's dead. Because some white boy said, I'm just going to go up there and shoot this place up. Right? A, a mind, you know, they say a mind is a terrible thing to waste. That's all we've been doing. You know, and so, so the question of, well, you know, this woman's a positive, that's woman. Because here's the thing. The Westerner will tell you, because, you, know, you know, the brother you know, who was telling me this, he's more into traditional values and all that kind of stuff. The Westerner, mainly the feminist, she, the feminist, the white feminist would be like, you know, the, the, the wife, the house, the wife is also, a, you know, that's what, she, that's what she would say. The white woman. I'm not going to say it because I don't want to get no, I don't want no squabbles. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I said, man, men are controlled by violence. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like, what I want you to understand is this, that if, if, if a people, if a people generally, are not productive and only a handful of people are, right? And that might be the case, right? But if they're not productive or they're not contributing to the productivity of their nation, which is another thing, you know, the, 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 the so on and so forth. And a lot of people aren't. Most people aren't. And I mean specifically in Africa. Uh, but even generally, like you go to the hood, a lot of them are not producing anything, right? A lot of them have ambitions of music and, 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 and dancing and, bat and sports. Right, which are not productive fields. These are entertainment fields, right? A lot of people are, are, are making a good living, you know, doing prank videos or even like doing like YouTube commentary, like I'm doing. Right now, I'm not making a good living off of it, but but you understand. Uh, either way, I want you to I want you to 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 get that that's a that's a thing, that's a thing. Uh, now, what I want to do is just uh, before I even get into the article. Because I do want to get into the article. Because I know some people only want to um, uh, read the article. But before we get there, I want to just read this. Um, this is actually based off of a true story, by the way. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna just put, put a little bit of this Zubiri over here. Uh, just for, you know, just for some context. So in Zubiri, he says, look, he may not look it. So Zubiri basically throws this guy who's a homeless man. He says, he may not look it, Zubiri remarks, but he's a regular con here. He begs so he can go to the city and eat high-end tripe and attend city, city strip clubs. We have offered him jobs, but he'd rather manipulate the, sy the sympathy of his brothers and sisters than earn an honest living that benefits his people, right? So basically, in Zubiri, what they do is they, they organize uh, like a little China, you know, like a Chinatown. But th they do this in the context of there's a free Africa, and the free Africa now has satellite cities around the world. And so one of the satellite cities is um, where Zubiri lives, right? Um, so Zubiri lives in a satellite city, and, and there's, a, there's a beggar outside who's just, oh, I need some money, you know? And so Zubiri throws him out like, yo, motherfucker, go find a job. Like, go work, you know? Um, so Zubiri segued into a political discourse. He says, our race cannot hope to have an economy if, it, if its people do not produce anything. You gotta, you remember, turn around and say to yourself, like, like, look around your house and say to yourself, how many things, and I'm not, I don't mean just art pieces, right? How many things were produced by black folk, okay? Versus how many things were produced by white folk. Like right now, I'm talking through this mic. I got this Logitech uh, mouse, actually mouse and keyboard. You know, I got this computer. We, we ain't produced this, okay? Well, I, I, we ain't produced this, right? So, so Zabiri continues, like, I'm all for men eating, Hence why I told him to go in and find employment. But productivity escapes most of our race. For that, most of our people are enslaved. And so, you know, he's talking to this sister named Dallas. Dallas is named after uh, one, of my, one of my first supporters uh, uh, on the African Blood Siblings website. So I says, she, she says, most, Dallas asked, and he says, working for the white man isn't much different from begging of the black man. Both are begging, truly, Work only appears more dignified. You understand? And then uh, 
uh oh yeah so then you know later on she goes uh you know whatever but i want you to i want you to process what that that conversation or that exchange was you know how working for the white man isn't much different from bank the, the only thing is that you're profiting the white man when you work for him you know what I'm saying? When you beg from him, you ain't really profiting him. Right? And when you're doing the prostitution, you know, you still begging. Uh, you still you actually working <laughs> for what he is just directly for what he wants. Or oh, not just him, obviously, you know, because you could prostitute to uh, black folk too. But uh, again, you know, we, we pretend to add more dignity to, hey, you know what? I just filled out your paperwork, sir. He's like, okay, good. You just made me some more money. Thank you. You're here to make me money. You are here to make me money. That's all the white man's going to tell you. You are my labor. You know? Clean the toilet, boss. Now, you might be like, well, it's more dignified than, you know, sitting on your ass. Yeah, it's, it's more dignified if you say so. But you're still just sitting on your ass. Because this other white man, he's, he's the one doing some shit. You understand? But all right, we, we ain't going to go into that. Let's uh, let's go let's go into uh, the, the, hopefully, uh, um, yeah, let's just go into it. So we got Nkrumah's industrialization policy. So we say, look, they're going to lose a great vision or not. So as our president goes globetrotting, trying desperately to invite foreign investors to set up industries to create employment for our youth, a look at Ghana's recent history will show where we went wrong and why our economy is in such a terrible shape after the 1960s. Right. So they, they recognize it with their what their president is doing. Job creation is the number one priority of most leaders of the industrialized nations. They know that without keeping the youth and their workforce gainfully employed, there would be no cash to purchase houses, appliances, cloths, and other goods, and consequently no payment of taxes to the state. The result is a downward spiral of their economies. Now look at this. See, this is the, this is the, this is the trouble with, uh, this is the trouble with us. Oh, look, you can't even copy it. You can't even highlight this stuff. But anyway, um, this is the trouble with us right here. They think that, oh, well, you know, if, if you don't give us jobs, uh, if you don't give us jobs, then how are we going to uh, buy the stuff? No, 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 no. You have those jobs to produce those things so that they can sell those things. And if you're not the buyer, that's fine. They'll find other buyers. You understand? Or they won't find other buyers. Right? But, 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 but they're not really so concerned about just, like, you're not the exclusive buyer. I can say it that way. You understand? Because because if you guys are paying attention to that 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 video I showed you, right? Uh, there were motorcycles, there were motorcycles, there were um, you know windows and houses and and all the wind and all the houses had appliances, whether they be fans, whether they be uh, light switches, all that kind of stuff. And a lot of those light switches and fans and all that kind of stuff were produced abroad. Again, what, what I want you to understand is that you, if you're not producing anything, that's your problem. That's your problem. Right? But anyway, she says, look, so this is already like, what are you talking about? You know, we have to have we have to have the, the workforce gainfully employed. Otherwise, no, you want them there. You want them to, to be employed in producing things so that you can make money from selling things. See, because if I'm the CEO of 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 that, you know, of I don't know, Logitech, right? I'm not personally building keyboards. And 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 um and mouses, you know I can't I can't even personally do that. Now I'm not saying the CEO of, of Logitech can't build his own keyboard because maybe he can't, right? But I'm not personally building ten thousand keyboards. What I'm doing is I'm searching for buyers of 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 five thousand keyboards. That's what I'm doing, you know. And I, and that buyer might be Best Buy. That buyer might be Walmart. That buyer might be Amazon. That buyer might be the school down the street. That buyer might be, that's what I'm doing as the CEO. I can't remember who said it. Somebody told me, they were like, yo, the CEO is looking for uh, more, like the CEO's job is to look for more business deals, like business sales or something like that. I don't remember. But I mean, I'll just simplify it, you know, business sales. More, look for better trades. Look for better trades, you know? Oh, oh, okay, Amazon will buy it from, you know, buy 5000 for for this amount of money. So I'm good now. You understand? Are we going to keep going? Um, or 50000 500000 whatever. Uh, there are many growing up in Ghana today who are desperate because they cannot get jobs to earn income and make ends meet. Many of them are graduates of our secondary schools and even our universities. Many aspire only to go overseas and look for gainful employment. Exactly. But again, I want you guys to remember this. Look, 
Now, I showed you videos of Tanzania, but it's pretty much the same in Ghana, too. But I showed you videos of Tanzania. That field was gainful employment. Now, you might be like, well, it's not the... No, not just that field. That town was gainful employment. If you develop it. You understand? Know if you develop it, it's gainful employment. If you have a people who are willed towards the development of Africa, it is gainful employment. But what happens is this. People are saying, you know what? I'd rather go to the white man. Why would they rather go to the white man? Because the white man has those developers. The white man has those developers. And, and you know, you, 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 you want to pretend otherwise. You want to pretend that you have the developers and the white man doesn't. Right? But I just told you guys about the story about the girl who's, um, sell, who, 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 who's in a lab creating diamonds. She's in a lab creating diamonds. That, that's, 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 that's the difference. Because see, if, because the thing is this, you could have been in a lab creating diamonds. You could have been doing that from, from, you know, 1744. You know what I'm saying? You, you don't have to wait for, you know, you can say, well, the technology's not there. Well, yeah, why, why is the technology not there for you? Because it's, it's, it's clearly there for somebody. So why is the technology not there for you? You know? I, I, I mean, I mean, we have to, we have to face, you know, this is my favorite line from John Red Bruce, right? But he's like, we have to face facts as well as fancies. You know? You want to pretend that you are the development-minded people. But, but, but you're not. Unfortunately. You know, I'll tell you guys about this uh, artificial intelligence stuff that I, I, I've come across. You know, one of them is, uh, they call it mid-journey. And it just creates art. It just creates art um, um, by, by, by text, like text to image prompts. So you could say, you know, I want to see a, a seven-year-old black boy with a, with, with, a, with a mustache and all that kind of stuff or whatever, right? And in fact, I can show you guys some of the stuff I created, right? But, you know, you could tell it that, right? And it just does it. But the people behind the technology, and I'm not going to say they're all white. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm not going to say that they're all white. But the people who create this technology, right? That they're, 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 they're development minded. They say, hey, there's something that's not available. There's there's some sort of market that's out there. Let me try. Let me try and do something. You know, I'm going to show you guys because uh, I told you guys I'm trying to write a kid's book. Right. I'm going to show you guys uh, some of the images. So I I, I kept because it's, it's, it's not easy to, to make this stuff. Right. It's not easy to make this stuff. But what happens is this. I'm I'm going to. Um, because it's not easy, uh, I'm going to, uh, like, like it's a lot of trial and error, right? Notwithstanding that I'm going to show, uh, I mean, again, it's just technology. So this is, this is, uh, I said to myself, I want to create a children's book. So I told the thing, I said, look, make, make me, a, make me, a, make me a, what, what did I say? I said, make me an African seven-year-old boy who's joyful, has long dreadlocks under a kente head wrap. He wears cargo shorts with an African print dress shirt, children's illustration book style. And that's what it came out with. Now, on the other hand, you could also, you know, I was trying out some of the other prompts that it could have. I could show you guys. Um, and some people are going to complain about, oh, it's taken from real artists. And, you know, some of the real artists they come taken from is like dead for, for 9,000 years. But again, you could have done this technology. This is a different prompt. It's uh, another dreadlocks boy. I know. I mean, I know it's not the most marketable thing to get dreadlocks kids, but, you know, it is what it is. And obviously you can see a lot of errors. The computer is not going to be flawless. Uh, and you could tell it, you know, redo whatever you was doing um, uh, for whatever reason. But, you know, uh, this one is somebody made a, a lion. And so I just changed their prompt into a thing. And I'll show you this one last one again. But again, here's what I mean by development minded in the sense that these old Wazungu is going around building the infrastructure, right, to to make things, to make things happen, make things work. Right. And. And and then we sit around and we're like, yo, well, we're the development mind. You know, wow, we built uh, we built ancient Kemet. You know, I, I remember there was this uh, um, the, I guess it was like a joke. You know, some of y'all boy Amos Wilson said, Amos Wilson was like, they're gonna rush you to the gas chamber, and and on the way to the gas chamber, you're gonna be talking about how you brag, like how you how you built Kemet and all that stuff. Now I'm not even gonna say that the white boy needs to even bring you to a gas chamber. What I want you to understand is this. 
You're dependent. You know, you're dependent. You are a dependent. It's like, it's like, matter of fact, it's like this. It's like this. Like, 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 like my son is a dependent on me. You know, not just me. I'm mean, obviously his mother sometimes, but like he's a dependent. You know, like today, what does he eat? He eats what I put on his plate. Or he doesn't eat what I put on his plate. Now, granted, I'm a nice person, so if he doesn't eat it, then I might look for something else for him to eat. But, like, what do you eat? What, what do you eat? And granted, I mean, some of you have a better economics, and so, you know, I remember this one woman, in fact, she, she was rich, you know, black woman. Um, she was rich. She would order food. <laughs> She would order takeout from other countries. Like, what the fuck kind of shit is that? She's rich, right? But, like, unless you got that kind of money, right? You go into the grocery store that he set up. You go into the, the stores that he set up. Now, granted, you might go to uh, black-owned establishments, but even those black-owned establishments, you know what? I just, I just, I just, I just want, I want more for us. But I want you, because like I said, I'm trying to change the leaders. And lead the changes. You know what I mean? Like, I think that that's what we should be about. We should be changing the leaders and leading the changes. You should be about changing the leaders and leading the changes. You are one of the leaders. Okay? And you're one of the changes. So I want you, of all people, to come out with this development mindset of saying, you know what? I should be making the next best, the next big thing. And if I'm not making the next, next big thing, then, then, like, something's wrong with me. And I can't, I can't blame the white boy for me not making the next best, best thing because a lot of these white boys making it, like a lot of these, these white boys who are making this AI thing, I mean, I don't know them. And that's the whole point. I don't know them. You don't know them. They're not, they're not you know, oh, I'm, you know, I'm from, a, you know, I'm from the best family on the planet. I thought you were. You know what I'm saying? I thought you were. By the way, that voice right there, that's, that's a little bit of a uh, ultimatum's voice. Let's uh, go back to the chat so I could, uh. Try to focus. Let's see what the chat says. Um, Afro Jam says, uh, no, no, no. First, Lero came in. Lero says, peace, loved ones. Peace, Lero. Um, my thing is, why, why Matron? I remember I, all of the uh, KWAZ radio family has a, has, a, has, a, has a thing, has a moderating thing. Afro Jam says, whole country's living off remittances. They would rather work for others and send crumbs home. Exactly. You know? Uh, Kofi says, I like the art, reminds me of Little Bill. You know, whatever, whatever, whatever sells at this point, you know? Because I realize I, I need to, I, I need to get a, I need to get a passive income. I mean, I have a passive income, but I need a bigger passive income. You know, just because Africa's so expensive, you know? <laughs> anyway, let's keep going, though. Uh, so he says, uh, there are many, there are many, and, 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 and personally, per, also partially because I don't want to birth for no cracker, you know? Uh, there are many growing up in Ghana today who are desperate because they cannot get, yeah, 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 all right. So he says, there is a debate on some of the Ghanaian internet forums that show the lack of understanding, even among our educated elite, on how Ghana started on the path of industrialization, how we ended up today as HIPC. In a recent, so I don't know what that is. He should, he should explain it. If, you, if you're using an acronym, just whatever. But, uh, and I mean, I might have remembered. I might have known it from way back. But anyway, in a recent debate on the Ghanaian Okiyame internet forum, statements were made by those opposed to Asaji Fo, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's political and economic policies that seem to illustrate that the negative propaganda that was unleashed following his overthrow in 1966 has had a damaging effect on the direction of industrial development in our country. In fact, the negative and sometimes vile propaganda has reached a point that even young, highly educated men and women growing up today do not know the real facts about what our first prime minister and later president did that could have propelled Ghana into an industrialization with a viable economy like those of the Southeast Asian nations today. In this article, I present facts regarding the foundation started by this illustrious son of Ghana as well as his planned program for industrialization, which was sabotaged by the NLC and their political uh, allies. The Economist, a reputable UK publication, captured the political allies of the NLC who opposed Nkrumah in a leading article of the publication on 16th November 1957, sections of which I quote below. He says, this crit criticism has always been leveled against the NLM and which is much more applicable to the present, present assorted uh, brunch of critics 
the United Party, is that while accusing the government of corruption and totalitarianism, destructiveness and inefficiencies, it has offered no alternative policies of its own. The opposition has two rather contradictory answers to this. First, that the United Party is soon to announce a constructive policy, which has never come. And second, that its program has to be vague or the government will appropriate and spoil its ideas. So basically he's saying the haters of Nkrumah's ideas, you know, never had their own constructive policy and they didn't share it because otherwise the government will try to take their ideas. Now, again, again, like, like I said, you know, this, this is the thing. I, it's important. It's important. It's important. This is important. Okay? Basically, you want to be in government because that's where the power is. Okay? You want, if you're not in government, if you're not even, if your political party is not in government, if you do not support the political party that's in government right now, right? then you're out, of, you're out of power. You understand? Now, again, if you're in a situation where your government is political parties based, right, you have to be behind the political party. You have to be influential in that political party, especially if you're a leader. Especially if you're a leader. And that's who I want to be talking to. If you're not a leader, then what the fuck, right? But, or I'm not saying that everybody's a leader. I'll get you what I'm saying. But what I'm saying, if you're not a leader or a changer, like, come on, but... And I'm just going by the rap, you know, but, you know, what he's saying is that, you know, so the, on one hand, you know, not being the political party in power and saying, I don't want to say what I'm saying. Otherwise, you're going to take my ideas does sound it's a little bit legit, a little bit, a little bit. It's stupid. It's immature. It's but it, I mean, I get it, you know, because, again, like, I, like, 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 for instance, if we had a, you know, let's say, uh, let, let me give my let me give like, oh, I hear Pan-African multinationalist party, right? We had that, right? And then the other party was the, uh, um, you know, the other political party was the, you know, a hyper-nationalist party, you know, or the ADOS party, right? I might be like, I don't want to give the ADOS party any ideas so that they stay in power. I don't like them in power, right? But at the same time, you got to ask yourself, well, is this idea important for the development of my people? Because if it's, it's important for the development of my people and I'm not in power, I still want to see that. Now, I might be like, nah, look, I get it. You know, if the AWS party is doing pretty good, they're going to stay in fucking power, and that's going to keep me out of power. So I get why. I mean, partially, but again, that's the whole part about humans and human needs and human interests and why humans have uh, that dynamic to them. You know? Because you have to make, like, you have, like, there, there's sometimes you have to make sacrifices. Sometimes you have to make uh, political decisions that hurt people realistically you know um so it is it is a it is like it's not it's not without merit but again if we're talking like again uh 2020 vision is hindsight you know you guys knew what 2020 was like but anyway uh 2020 vision is hindsight right so in hindsight if you really could have advanced uh ghana and you chose not to because you didn't want the government to advance Ghana, then you're a fucking idiot. And, 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 and it's a good thing you didn't fucking get into power. Although, apparently you did get into power and Ghana is where it's at. So, you, you, you really were just bluffing. Like, your bluff was called and, and, and this is like, the, like, you're, like you're a disgrace to your race. We'll just say it like that. But anyway, um, that's what Carlos Cook's... <laughs> you know, Carlos Cook said that uh, to John Henry Clark, by the way. Uh, and, <laughs> Cause Johnny McClark was like a socialist, I guess. Uh, but anyway, um, he was a socialist who didn't like that uh, Carlos Cook's family owned land in Harlem, like had uh, like were landlords in Harlem. You know, he was like, "Oh, you guys are slum landlords." You know, like what the fuck? I'm trying, like, like you know, you own property, right? Like, I'm saying, man. Like I say, man. That's why I say, don't. I don't mess with the socialists either. But it's like you want black folk to own property. You want black folk to control their own economy. And instead, you're going to go by this socialist mindset of, well, you know, why are you landowners? Nobody should own land. Every land should be free. And, and then all of a sudden, please. And the irony is this, in fact. <laughs> Here's like a more added irony is that sometimes the people hold the, um, like black conscious events, if you want to call it black conscious events. But, you know, here in, uh, in, in, uh, here in Harlem, when they, show, when they hold events, they hold it at John Henry Clark's house. And it's a whole brownstone. <laughs> And and the people be like, we gotta preserve this brownstone, you know. <laughs> you know what 
you know, we lost all the Browns, though. And it's like, dude, it's like, like, like the way how the world works is that, you know, all right, realistically, the way the world works is just by some real laws, real reality, real nature that we tend to ignore for ideologies. Oh, we tend to ignore for false beliefs, you know. Oh, I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be rich if I keep praying. No, you're, the way are you gonna be rich is if you keep trading, right? That's the basics. You know, if you keep trading, that's how you're gonna be rich. If you keep owning shit, that's how you're gonna be rich, right? That, that's how that's, that's what you gotta do in life. Like I showed you all the all 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 the land that, that that's for the development. You own that land, you're good. You trade, you produce things from that land, and you trade things from that land, you're good. You know, even if you don't trade, even if you have 80 pounds of fucking mangoes, right? And nobody wants any of your mangoes. Guess what? You still have 80 pounds of mango. You're good. And for those who don't know, mango's like the best damn fruit on the planet. <laughs> so, like, you're good, right? And, like, who doesn't want to, who doesn't want your mangoes, you know? But all right. And Kuma's bold step in preparing Ghana for industrial takeoff was his concentration on education. The accelerated education program, and that's really important, by the way. The accelerated education program and the setting up of the Ghana Education Trust, which enabled the building of secondary and technical schools all over Ghana, were the first steps in training the skilled manpower required for Ghana's industrialization. To enable the reader put things into perspective, I would like to quote relevant sections from the last sessional address of Nkrumah to Parliament on February 1st, 1966, over three weeks before, only three weeks before his overthrow. So the technical education is also progressing steadily. Already a technical teacher training college has been built at Kamasi to train teachers. It's expected that within five years, this college will have trained an adequate number of technical teachers for our polytechnics, technical institutes, and training centers. A third government secondary technical school was opened in Obayasi in November last year, and a fourth one under construction at Koforidua is near completion. While higher education advances on a broad front, now I want I, I want to just 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 give you guys this. Y'all saw that town earlier, or even that village earlier. Like I said, that just tells you that it's cheap to buy there. You can buy a, a, a school there, and you could offer people, like you could tell people all over Tanzania, here's the here's where you go to for the school. Now, when you get a bunch of people coming for the school, you actually facilitate a new economy there because now these people, now these bunch of people have to eat. Now these bunch of people uh, have to have spaces to read. Now these rich people have to have spaces to live and sleep. You basically build a city. You build a new town and it doesn't cost you much. Now, you could also be in Dar es Salaam, in the capital of Dar es Salaam, and try to get that same land, and you already realize that you're competing against a whole bunch of other, uh, you know, corporations and interests who are like, hey, yeah, I know your person has to eat, but so does mine. I know that your person has to, has to sleep, but so does mine. And then you might, you know, have to drive up the cost of, uh, of, of, of school because you have to pay a heftier fee. What I'm saying is that you can do anything. And it doesn't even have to be technical education. You could be training soldiers. You know what I'm saying? You could be training soldiers. You could be training people how to shoot, training people how to kill. You could be doing anything. You know? And, and, and here's, the, here's, the, here's, the, here's, the, here's the big kicker, too. Ain't nobody watching you. Ain't nobody watching you. So, so yeah, you know, you could teach people... You can teach people both. You can teach people technical, technical uh, skills, you polytechnics, and then also how to break a motherfucker's neck. Or polytechnics and how to build a gun. How to print a gun. Just letting you know. Just letting you know. All right, so with higher education, while higher education advances on the broad front, I have directed, that this is, this is Chami Nkrumah again. Just, just, a, just a note for you guys um, who might be writers. Uh, you see how he has the quotation mark right here? You would put the quotation mark right here and here again. Now, you wouldn't put it here because that would close it, but you would put it over here so that we would know that he's continuing the uh, Kwame Nkrumah speech. But all right, so while edu education advances on a broad front, I have directed that emphasis be laid on education and science and technology with a view to Ghana producing in the shortest possible time not only the administrators and managers required to implement our development program, but also the scientists, technologists, and technicians needed in industry and agriculture. At the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science... Yo, this brother's good, though. How are you going to name the university after yourself while you're still alive? That's... that's I got to do that. <laughs> All right. At the Odi Taze University of uh, Science and Technology, the former Faculty of Science has been reconstituted into two faculties, namely the Faculty of Applied Science and the Faculty of Technology. In the new Faculty of 
applied sciences, science courses in meteorology, nuclear physics, and applied biochemistry have been introduced, while courses in chemical and textile technology and glassware are planned for the faculty of technology. So he's, he's doing it. He got it. He, had, he got the memo. And again, remember, you don't, don't forget that this is, a, this is a good, like this brother is an intellectual. You know, if you guys haven't checked out my, uh, you know, my, 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 my critical analysis of his videos, make sure you check out the playlist that I have um, listed in, uh, in, 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 in YouTube. Um, but all right, so he says, one of the first steps taken by the NLC, this is the author again, right? One of the first steps taken by the NLC and their political and economic advisors who have always opposed Nkrumah, as illustrated by the economists above, was to halt Nkrumah's progressive educational programs. Several teacher training colleges were closed down, scholarships of Ghanaian students abroad withdrawn, and the provision of free textbooks which enabled thousands of children from poor families stopped. You see that? And that's another thing too. You see how he says provision of free textbooks uh, uh, to, to children? That's another thing that you can do. You can provide, and I wouldn't say free, but you can create cheap textbooks. Or you can even provide, you can even write cheap, free textbooks. I don't, I don't give a shit. I mean, if that's what, you, that's what you got the money for, why not? Right? I personally don't think you should do anything for free. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is, right? Uh, obviously, it's, it's good, right? Um, and you don't even have to, like, create, like, like, here's the thing. Here's the thing. There are book depositories. For, for whatever legal reason, I won't. I won't disclose LibGen, right? But I won't disclose L-I-B-G-E-N, right? But, <laughs> for legal reasons, um, I won't disclose that. But what I'm saying is this. They have a whole bunch of free textbooks. You can do one of two things. You could, one, make them more available to people. Two, you can make study groups so people would actually read them because, you know, people don't really read. Three, you can crop together the useful pages of these textbooks and just make your own custom textbook book like that. Now, I know, I know I'm telling you, I'm saying you could do this like I can't, because I can't, um, and I might actually do it, you know? But I want you to understand that there's so much freely available that in these day and age, say, when, when Nkrumah was giving out free textbooks, they were books printed that cost you something. It don't cost you nothing to send no free, some ebook, some PDF. It don't cost you nothing. Like, 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 for instance, if I send you the a Carl St. Cook's book, I would love to get some money for that. But it don't cost me nothing to send it to you. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe two minutes of my time to, to look for the PDF and then send it to you. But it don't cost me nothing. And for that reason, yeah, sure, if you ask me for it, I'll say, hey, here you go. But, but anyway, we're going we're gonna to continue. But I, I, want, I, want, I want us to realize that, you know, he, and look what he says, though. The, the, the opposition party, the opposition party disabled the educational programs, disabled the colleges, disabled the, the textbook distribution, and now where is Ghana in terms of uh, atomic energy really? Like, where, where is that? So he says, not only did the NLC halt the expansion of primary and secondary education, but the reconstitution of the Faculty of Science at NUST into the Faculty of Applied Science and the Faculty of Technology was halted, uh, Kwame Nkrumah University. There, thus, courses in nuclear physics, uh, and I, 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 apparently I don't say nuclear right, but it is what it is. Uh, aimed at providing qualified Ghanaians for the Kwabinya Atomic Energy Project was abandoned. It is worth noting that our own Professor Alati completed his uh, PhD from Princeton in 1966 with international recognition to have enabled him to head the nuclear physics department. The importance of meteorology. So, so one of these one of these dudes, um, one of the one of the uh, professors, one of, one of the one of the students, Ghanaians. One of the Ghanaians went to Princeton and was 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 you know, training in order to eventually come back into Ghana and head the nuclear physics department. But, but the opposition party, the political party, the party that's in power, closed it down. The importance of meteorology in a basically agricultural country like Ghana cannot be overemphasized, but this program was also stopped by the NLC. So it was the course on applied biochemistry, which is today's biotechnology and biochemical engineering. And Krumah, with his foresight in establishing such a program, would have enabled Ghana to be at the forefront of today's biotechnology revolution right okay 
As regards to the faculty of technology, the courses in textile and technology and glassware technology were abandoned. In fact, the courses of glassware technology would have included ceramics and hence brick manufacture. Perhaps trained technologists in brick manufacture could have helped save the uh, president's own brick manufacturing business, which failed. The only course proposed under the faculty of technology not abandoned was chemical technology, but was retained in the original faculty of science until 1976 when it was moved to the fa faculty of engineering. Uh, Nkrumah's achievements in education aimed at preparing Ghana for an industrial takeoff prior to his overthrow may be summed up by the following facts. In the 1964 to 65 school year, there were 10,000, all right, 9,988. I'm, I'm an astrophysicist, so we just like, you know, round the numbers, but whatever. Uh, 9,988 primary and middle schools with an enrollment of 1,286,486 1, students, nearly 1.3 million. There were 89 secondary schools with 39,000 Okay, I don't know this number right here, but <laughs> let's say 329,721 pupils, uh, 47 teacher training colleges with an enrollment of 10,168. So 10,000 students were being, uh, uh, 10,000 teachers were being trained, 11 technical schools and three universities. All this in a population of 7.5 million put Ghana in the lead among independent African states. That's good. And you see, and it's really simple when you get the political structure. Because again, all that land I showed you, you could develop it on the individual level or uh, alternatively, the state can develop it on a state level. Okay? But the state has to want to develop it. So you're going to have to be within the circle of the state to say, you know what? I can get the people to do that. You know what I mean? Just give me the money. Give me the money and I can get the people to do that. Well, further damage to Ghana's prospects for successful industrialization occurred when the NLC sabotaged Nkrumah's program for research and development, R&D. Again, I quote from Nkrumah's last sessional address to Parliament. Now, I like how this guy finally uses the... I'll stop complaining, but you guys hear what I'm saying. Let me see what the comments are like, though. Sometimes i got to check in another window. Uh, Afro Jam says, greetings. Uh, greetings, Afro Jam. Um, let's keep going. Um... So let's see. The Ghana Academy of Science, which celebrated its sixth anniversary last November, has been rapidly expanding its scope of scientific research activities to provide necessary scientific and technological basis for our economic and social development. Last year, the Academy established no less than five new research institutes in the fields of food and science and technology, aquatic biology, geology and geophysics, industrial standards and marine fisheries. Many more research institutes are in an advanced stage of physical development of planning or of planning. These institutes, uh, these include the Institute of Glass and Ceramics, the Institute of Metallurgy, the Institute of Wildlife Research, the Institute of, for Research Development, and a Center for the Production of Scientific Instruments. The Academy, as a full-time national research organization, is conducting development research required in the utilization of natural resources of the country. This work should proceed up to the pilot plant stage so that the Academy can advise governments on the feasibility of agriculture and industrial projects being established by ministries and corporations. The Academy is thus the spearhead to the scientific and technological development of the country. The Academy will also assist the universities in the training of postgraduate students by proving fac facilities in its research institutes. Now, here's what I'm saying to you. Like, this should disappoint you. This should disappoint you. I mean, <sighs> so, again, you're going to have propaganda against Nkrumah. I don't like Nkrumah myself, honestly, but <laughs> I'm not saying he's a good guy. I don't think he's a good guy. Uh, and I guess he's a misogynist, so you know that. I'm going to say, I'm going to call him a misogynist. All right. But, Let's just still disappoint you. I want you to understand the importance of people. Matter of fact, I'll tell you this. I was at a bar the other day, right? And there was this uh, lesbian um, behind the counter, okay? Chill. She was chill. She was cool. And, like, you could tell by looking at her, she had an intelligence. Like, like she was, like, probably an intellectual. She probably read some books. You could tell by looking at her. Okay? You know, you know, you know, like that's it. You could tell. Some people you could tell that they have, like they have the demeanor, they have the composition, the comportment of, you know what, I'm not about no bullshit. I'm an into, like, I, I read books. You know, I could enjoy a book. Now, I don't know, maybe she could be reading bell hooks or some shit. I don't know. But the point being that you could tell. Now, here's the thing I always say about Nkrumah. Say what you want about this dude. Say he's a little crooked. Say this, blah, 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 blah. He's an intellectual. And the thing that you got to realize about this world, because I say game recognize game, okay? No, but for real. The thing you got to realize about this world is that the intellectuals are really the best leaders. 
The intellectuals are really the best leaders. And if you are an intelligent person, you will make a good leader. You will make a good leader. You'll make a better leader than a dumbass. Hear how this man, because here's the thing. He's giving this speech to his parliament. And it's so technical and intellectual. You know, here we are. We, we sit down in 2023 talking about, you know, no disrespect to anybody right, who might be talking about this. But we talk about building a curriculum and what could the curriculum be in regards to, like, what do Africans need? Right? And that's fine. But here's Nkrumah 50 years ago. Sorry, 60 years ago. Right? I mean, I'll say 50, whatever. Right? Here's Nkrumah pointing out, right? <laughs> Shit, you already hear them, right? Uh, here's Nkrumah pointing out to you, right? That you don't even, like, you don't even need a curriculum. What you need is power. You know? You don't even, you don't even need, because you know, when you have power and you are an intellectual, right? You're going to build what you need and then some. You know? You're going to be the Institute of Metallurgy. The Institute of Glass and Ceramic. Because, like, see, as an intellectual, as somebody who, 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 who like, me personally. Because I, I, I have in the Book of Power, I have, uh, you know, some suggested courses and so on and so forth. You know? And it's like, you know, I have generalized whatever. But you can break it down when you are in power. See, cause I, don't, I don't need to say ceramics and wildlife research. Although I love wildlife research, right? Or production of scientific instruments. I don't need to say that stuff, right? But when you're in power... You say to yourself, well, what is everybody else doing? Because now that I'm sitting down in power, I, you bring me the reports of what other people are doing, of what, what, what we can do, of what's accessible, what, what's, what, what we need. You understand? Aquatic biology, geology, geophysics, you know, machine fisheries, marine fisheries, right? Uh, like, like. Again, and, and, and here's the thing, I mean, because again, you know, when it comes to individuals, because like I said, I, 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 intellectuals are the best. Like, I, I don't want to use the word intellectual, like, because I don't like the academics, right? I don't like the astutes. I told you all about the astutes, right? But what I'm saying is that you see this man. I, 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 I should have told you this guys last week. I wanted to tell you this last week. The reason why America is where America is is because George Washington survived the war, okay? George Washington survived the war on the American side, okay? Not just George Washington, but because a, a lot of good generals for the American cause were killed, okay? A lot of good generals for the American cause were killed, but America's main general that pulled it through, right, survived and was able to be you know, the, the British main general, okay? Um, and that's it. That's really, that's really what life is. So the thing is that these men are killers. You understand? War, warfare is about killing, but, 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 but unless you win, right? Because the thing is this. If, if the British took out um, George Washington and they took out, uh, you, know, you know, Hamilton and they took out Jefferson, and, you know, Jefferson wasn't there, I guess, I don't know. But if they took out all these people, right? America will still be a colony. You understand? So say what you will. America still maybe a neo colony, maybe you know blah blah blah, blah but it still be a fucking colony, right? Or maybe the war would be delayed and then it, it might still be a colony. You understand? We don't know, but what happened? What we do know is that because they pulled through. Now here's the thing: you could say because he was killing people, Washington was killing people, or he was doing this, or he was doing that. He was a bad guy and. The, he didn't like the other political parties. He didn't like the, the pro-British elements, blah, blah, blah. Same with Nkrumah. You know? You're going to be like, hey, you know, he was killing people. He was blah, blah, blah. But the difference is this. These white boys were able to, and not just the white boys, but just generally, people were able to take him out of power. And because people were able to take him out of power, Africa, Ghana lost that intellectual. And so that's why I tell you, when it comes to power, when it comes to power, your main focus should be holding on to it, right? Because when they take you out, they take you fucking out. See, they didn't just take Ghana, they didn't just take Nkrumah out of the leadership. They destroyed and dismantled his schools. And not just that, they, had, they didn't have the intellectual capacity to follow him. 
See, cause see, if 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 I overthrew Nkrumah, sure, I would I would I would I would be like, you know what, that metallurgy institute, that's good shit. We'll keep that up. Let's do the wildlife research. That's good shit. We'll keep that up. Production of scientific instruments. We'll keep that up. Well, we're gonna do a little better. You understand? Cause game recognizes game. But that's why you have to. When you're looking at African leaders, that's why I like you know Kagame. Although you guys don't, or a lot of you guys don't, because he's a fucking intellectual. He's an intelligent man. You need intellect. And this goes back to not just Plato. Plato has this uh, book called The Republic, where they talk about the philosopher king. Right. Not just Plato, because what Plato was basing that book off of was ancient Egypt. And if you reread the Republic with that in mind, you begin to realize that this dude is that you're peeping ancient Egypt. And for those of you who are like, man, that's about bullshit. That's just some old whole tap shit. What did he what did the motherfucker get killed for? Now, it wasn't Plato with Socrates. Right. But what did Socrates get killed for? You know why they killed him? For 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 promoting foreign deities. And only foreign deities who's promoting. <laughs> I'm not even fucking capping you guys. I'm not even fucking capping. They they literally said, look, 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 look. We get like they like basically the motherfucker was a whole tap. And they was like, we tired of that bullshit. And, and, and that should be a warning to more than many of you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> that, that historically people kill whole temps, you know. Uh, I remember Leonard Jeffries said, you know, the world is not really defined by anti-Semitism, but anti-Kemitism. You understand? <laughs> you better watch your black ass out. <laughs> you know, you better watch the fuck out. Oh, I don't know. I, I can't even. I can't use that term really well. All right, let me uh, let me get back to the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ain't nobody enjoying this. Anybody enjoying this? Yeah, hit a hit. Hit a one if you enjoy this. Come on. Hit, give me a one. Give me a give me a <laughs> laugh emote if you enjoy it. If you don't like this, let me know. I can also cut it out. Um, but hey, let's see. Those of us working in the area of research and development, R&D, whether in academia or industry, know that R&D is an expensive business. For this reason, only the big multinational companies have the resources to do their own R&D, which they securely guard and protect. Further, an eye on the bottom line forces most companies to avoid undertaking potentially useful R&D that does not immediately improve the bottom line. Thus, in industrialized countries like the USA, government laboratories such as, such as NIST, National Institute for Standards and Technology, laboratories of the USDA, and others carry out such potentially useful research and develop processes to the pilot plant scale using public funds before such processes are taken over by private industry. In fact, cathode ray tubes used in our TV sets and radar used on all airports were development in government laboratories supported by public funds before private industry took up the process for mass production. So he's like, look, you know, uh, sometimes ain't nobody want to do R&D. Okay, nobody wants to do research and development because it's expensive and the profit is not necessarily there. So the government, and they're talking about United States government, takes up on researching things, right? Using public funds, and then if it if it has any sort of use, some private people may take up um, that, you know, in order to expand it. But otherwise, other uh, otherwise said, you know, the governments, you know, states do research and development, right? So he says this is precisely what Nkrumah started and wanted to do by further enhancing R and D capacity at the Ghana Academy of Sciences, now called the CS. Uh, IR, but was sabotaged by the NLC. In fact, to the Institutes of Glass and Ceramics, Metallurgy, Wildlife Research, Research Development, and the Center for the Production of Scientific Instruments planned by Nkrumah, only the Institute of Industrial Research and the Scientific Instrument Instrumentation Center was set up. The two, which the present writer is very familiar with, were mere shadows of what Nkrumah planned. The Glass and Ceramic Institute would have provided hands-on training for students at the Faculty of Technology that was sabotaged by the NLC. Today, most of Ghana's houses would have been built with brick from local clay, thus reducing our dependence on imported clinker for cement. More importantly, the Institute of Metallurgy that was sabotaged would have enabled Ghana to do her own R&D and thus exploit the huge iron ore deposits in the country to produce iron and steel required for our industrialization. It is, however, worth noting that in Ghana, those who preach free enterprise and champion market economics conveniently claim amnesia when it comes to government support of R&D and subsidizing of agriculture and iron and steel production in industrialized countries. Yeah. So again, if you're preaching free enterprise and market economics, like you're, like read Wealth of Nations. Like if you're preaching that stuff, just read Wealth of Nations. Because when you read Wealth of Nations, you realize that that was not what Adam Smith was saying. 
that was instead a caricature, right, by some French les affaires. That's why it's in French, right? It's a caricature by some French, um, you know, just just you know, just layabouts, you know. So so why do I say layabouts instead of whatever? Why I say that is to say this. Um, so the reason why I like Adam Smith's book, right, and it's not about Adam Smith, but the reason why I like it is because it's a scientific, it's a scientific overview of of economies, right, um, and and how and how they worked around the world, and you know, like like pretty much what nations were doing, right. So he would say, hey, you know what, governments support R and D, you know, governments subsidize agriculture, governments subsidize production governments do that kind of stuff that's what they're supposed to do and of course he would lay out the benefit the pros and cons of that right and he would say hey there's no reason to go to any extreme you just have to weigh out the pros and cons you get what i'm saying like like you have to just weigh out the pros and cons like like for instance yeah you just have to weigh out the pros and cons right or, or, or in other words like like i said if i could produce 80 pounds of mangoes and my neighbor could produce 80 pounds of pineapple Right. There's no reason for both of us to do 40 pounds of mango and 40 pounds of, you know, like like there's a there's a way for us to optimize, you know, this mathematics type of thing. Right. Um, and so like like the whole, you know, what the whole after after this book came out, you know, there are people who were like, let's go to the extreme case and all that kind of stuff. Going by the extreme case, whether that be socialism or free market capitalism, whatever, it's not realistic. Like go by reality. Go by reality, go by facts. That's what I liked about the uh, Adam Smith book, is that it's, it's a factual, it's a factual book. It's a book that's basically, let's go by the facts, not by the theory. And then what happens is that we tend to get caught up in the theory um, because we don't have the facts. You know? What was the economy like in 19, uh, or in fact, in, in 1820 in, in, in England? What was the economy like in 1810? Um, in Ghana, if you don't know what it was, right, then you just don't have the facts. And that's, that's the big difference. So if somebody writes a book on, well, this is what the economy was like, just completely factual, then it's a good book. And, and that's what I want you to understand, that you, realistically, you want to go by reality. You want to go by facts, wherever the source. Wherever the source. You know? If somebody says, hey, man, there's a gunman, you know... <laughs> If you head into the mall and somebody says, somebody outside says, hey, there's a gunman in the mall, right? You don't go and say, well, okay, what are your credentials for saying there's a gunman in the mall? I was just, I was just, and, and the person's like, look, I was just in the fucking mall and there was a gunman. Now you don't go by, okay, well, what's your demographic? Are you a white man? Are you a black? No! The motherfucker said there's a gunman in the mall. Just don't go in the fucking mall unless you're planning to shoot the gunman. You know, <laughs> unless you want to confront the gunman, don't go in the mall. Now, I'm not saying nobody lies. And I'm not saying that white people don't lie. White people definitely do lie. But what I'm saying is that if it's a fact, right, then go buy it. You know? And again, I'm not saying that other people are always sharing facts. I'm not. What I'm saying is if it's a fact, then go with it. Because, I mean, I could easily tell you about a book. You know, those of you, I know some people love when I talk about this subject. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm talking about a book that presented as fact. It's not fact. You know what I mean? Obviously, the religious texts, right? They're not fact. Okay. So, obviously, people can lie in books. That's a, like, it's normal. But what I'm telling you is that sometimes there are factual accounts or even mostly predominantly factual accounts. And you just, you just, you just take in the facts. That's all I want you to do. I want you to take in the facts. Anyway, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, and criminals detractors are always quick to point out that the fundamental liberties were suppressed and the country was economically bankrupt prior to its overthrow. Yes, see that? And again, you, you want to. You want to. If you're an intelligent person, if you're an intelligent person and you want to stay in fucking power, you actually do want to squash some fundamental liberties. I know, I know you don't want to hear that. I know you want to hear, no, you got to give everybody the fundamental liberties. I know you want to hear that. And I mean, I'm not saying squash the fundamental liberties to the point where, you know, I'm not saying be abusive. I'm not saying do any of that kind of stuff. I am not even, I'm not even not saying be abusive. Real talk. What I'm telling you is this. If you are really trying to develop the country, right, not just for your own personal interest, but for the interest of your fucking continent, because I, because you can give Nkrumah whatever you want. I mean, maybe he had a little bit of ego problem, which is bad, but whatever it is, you want to develop your, like, like this guy wanted the fucking freedom of our African people. 
Now, granted, he kind of wanted it for the whole continent. He kind of wanted it with the motherfucking North, like the Arabs and all that shit. I get it, right? I'm not saying he's perfect. What I'm telling you is this. If Washington had died, right, America would not be where it is today. And because Nkrumah died, Ghana is not, like, like we're not talking from a position of a free and powerful and first world Ghana because Nkrumah died. Okay, and now obviously he wasn't assassinated, but what I'm, I'm just saying to you, like, like you might as well say he died, okay? Because you have to hold on to power. And if, if holding on to power means, you know, squashing some of your dissenters, right? Who, again, hindsight 2020, who will fuck up everything, right? Then fucking squash them. You understand? It's like the same thing happened in that... De- 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 All right. The same thing happened inside of um, Haiti. Dessalines. You know, you have the Petion and you have the, what was that? The, the, hey, like, I'm actually, like, low-key, I'm sad, you know? <laughs> like, and I, I try not to be, I try not to get emotional. You know, I try not to get emotional. But, like, yeah, same thing happened in, <sighs> fuck. You know? <laughs> like, it keeps happening. I want you guys to understand, you have to squash your fucking opposition. You have to kill the Ascari. Okay, you have to. If you do not fucking kill the Ascari, they will fucking destroy everything you have. And your people will and your people will suffer. You cannot spare the few to hurt the many. Like just look at what's happening in Haiti right now. Look at what's happening in Ghana. I've been to Ghana. If you haven't been to Ghana, I've been to Ghana. I've been to Tanzania. Okay? It's it's not it's not nation building is not easy, but you have to you have to be serious. Matron says one. Appreciate Matron. Matron is the only person that likes this content right now, but it's all good. As long as she likes it, we're going to keep going, right? <laughs> all right, let's keep going. The Krumah's detractors are always quick to point out the fundamental liberties were suppressed and the country was economically bankrupt prior to its overthrow. Firstly, the enemies of Nkrumah always fail to tell Ghanaians that investing in education and infrastructure are essential for industrialization, even if it means temporarily experiencing economic difficulties. How many Ghanaian families have not invested uh, their ch- in their children's secondary and tertiary education with the hope of ensuring their future economic success by borrowing or even leasing their farms? Nkrumah dismissed the bankruptcy charge and the stopping of his development programs when he broadcast to the people of Ghana on 20 March 1966 from Kanarki, Guinea, with his own qu- charge. And I quote, members of the NLC were too ignorant to realize that a planted seed takes time to germinate before sprouting into the glorious foliage that is visible to all. Because again, look, you can easily get money by begging from this white boy. You can easily get money from working for this white boy. Be like, hey, Mr. White Man, um, uh, do you want me to develop, you want me to give you the diamonds right here? You want me to give you the, you want me to give you the sugar? Like, what do you want me to do, right? You can easily get money that way, but that's not going to help your people in the long run. Because what your people, because again, remember, the white man wants one thing from you. Even now, even today, he wants one thing from you, your labor, right? Your resources, right? The, the reason why the hood suffers so much in America is because, you know, you know, the hood, as much as it has some labor, right? Um, and not, not, not too much good labor, but some labor, right? Has no resources. You understand? Has no resources. We're not processing, man. We're not processing. And so these, these other motherfuckers would be like, hey, you know, we'll get you some money real quick. Yeah, like, like you could get some good, you could get money real quick in the hood selling drugs. You know? <laughs> yeah, some good money selling drugs. But if you want to put people towards the plan of development, one thing, like I said, first off, there's not that many resources, but um, there. But like you could also, you know, build something you know, like you could build like, uh, I don't know, technology, like technology, like things that don't require um, too many like raw materials, you know, like te- not technology jobs or, or things of that nature. Right. You could build that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, but but, you know, like, like I said, this AI, this AI right here. Right. If you can build a, a AI, like a art gallery, there's tons of people, white people. Right. Who are saying to themselves, look, you print this, sh- this, this, this woman on a, on a black shirt and you sell it. 
and somebody wants to buy it. Or you print this woman on a, on, on a, on a, on a poster, right? And you sell it. Somebody wants to buy it, right? They, 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 these white people, matter of fact, I had this, uh, I was just looking at this, uh, this white boy, uh, he was like, like he asked, like, I'm like, I'm going to watch this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to actually do this right in front of y'all. Now, obviously, I'm not going to do it right, right in front of y'all because it's on the Discord. Um, but I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just type in, right, while we're talking, right? I'm going to tell the computer, coloring book. Coloring book style, right, of beautiful African queen. Um... Beautiful African queen in um, photo, like like Sony, let's say Sony quality, right? Whatever, right? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna just gonna make up something right now. So I just told the computer, right? I did this kind of privately. It's on a Discord, but I still did it privately. I just told the computer. The computer's gonna tell me when it's finished, right? And 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 again, like I said, because I saw this white boy, he was he was like, "Hey, I made it. I made three coloring books using AI." Now, granted, it, it took him. He said two days for each, right? Two days of labor, right? You know, for, to prepare the, the the cover and all that kind of stuff. But it's still like you could be, you could just do this. You could just do this. You know. Now, granted, there's a limit to how much you can do with other people's technology, right? But if you build a technology, again. Other people are going to just use your technology for whatever reason, just like Open Chat GT, which is uh, the AI that, that speaks to you, right? So I actually don't get the time. Oh, I, I think it's already finished. Yeah, okay. It's already finished. So I'm going to show you guys the image. Um, yeah, it's already finished. My fault. I was going to say it's going to take a bit, but it actually didn't take any time. Um, look at this. Look at this. So basically, I could take this image, right? I mean, obviously, they have this on the side, which is not that good, but, and just print it in a book. You know, this right here could be the cover of the book. This right here could be another page in the book. Or I could say, I like this style, keep doing this style, and, and make more images. I want you to understand that you, you, could, you could easily, right? You could easily produce. <sighs> you know, I, I mean, it's, it's. It's sad at this point. You know, it's sad. It's like what other people are able to do, right? And it's like we, we have it. We have it too. We, we do it. We do it well too. Because I, I was going to say, you know, um, there was actually back in the day I used to write articles on the African Blood with somebody's website just of things that you could do. And I, I said, you know, there was a black community that made up their own, uh, uh, they made up their own, uh, uh, what you call it, like film industry. And I was kind of basing it off of Nollywood. You know how black folk got together and said, we're going to do a film industry. But that's what white people did too. They said, look, we went down in some podunk region, you know, Hollywood. At the time, it was just a podunk region, right? And they set up film, film studios. Because it's they, just like that, that town I showed you guys. Podunk, right? You know, you, 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 you go and you set up a film industry. Now, all of a sudden, a bunch of the people around the neighborhood are actors and actresses. A bunch of people around that neighborhood are, 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 are learning, you know, you know, there's, there's now acting schools around. A bunch of people around the neighborhood, again, are feeding the actors. Like, you know, you know, like, oh, it's so fucking, like, it's, it's scary how easy it is. Now, again, maybe there's, now, now obviously, there's a capital requirement. There's a cost requirement, you know. Um, you, might need a, you might need a good phone, you know. Like, like I, was, I was at this function, and this lady in front of me had an iPhone 14 or whatever, camera quality good as a motherfucker, you know, uh, <laughs> I can't hold you, compared to my camera, my camera was shit, right, but like, yeah, you, you, you get a good camera, and then all of a sudden, right, you have a film industry, all of a sudden, you got a, a news network, you know, whatever it is that people are consuming, man, me not me not all right, but yeah, I think I was, uh, I think I was going about, you know, you have to destroy the motherfucking opposition. You have to, you have to get the Ascari. If you don't get the Ascari, you're, you're fucked up. You're fucked over. But it is what it is. Let me see what the comments are like. Um, uh, Matron says, as a people, we don't invest enough in the future. We want gratification now, and we fill our bellies. But we don't want to do the serious work of building. Building and development takes time. Yeah, exactly. And I, I don't even want to say as a people. I want to say the Ascari, the Ascari are about 
filling, lining their pockets, quick, fast, right? Like Ramadan, right? But but you have, and I'm not gonna give you know Nkrumah the, the big you know I, 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 you know on Colby a title, right? But you have some Africans who would be about hey, let's build these motherfucking schools. Now, I mean, let's build these schools, let's build these networks, let's build this, let's build our people up. Let's have the power of the state behind uh, our people being edu- like being informed and, 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 and important and, in- and intelligent and skilled. You know? Because here's what happened with uh, 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 Dr. King was saying. He was like, yo, you know, African Americans. He was like, African Americans are in some trouble because we don't have the skilled labor. You know? Because skilled labor is being replaced by machines. And the thing is that everybody knows this. If you, if you paid attention at all, if you ever said to yourself, all right, let me listen to what Karl Marx is saying. He's saying skilled labor. No, he's saying labor is being replaced by machines. If you, if you pay attention to this, uh, um, the, 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 there's a story that African Americans have. Damn it. I can't remember his name now. But um, the, the, the man who's, who's uh, uh, he's like racing a, a, a train or something like that. <laughs> like it's, like he's trying to set out train tracks. I think it's John Henry maybe, but yeah, I think it's John Henry. But John Henry, the whole story of John Henry is you know there's this black you could be a, you could be the strongest black man on the fucking planet, right? It doesn't matter. Machines will be better than you. And you might say, well, in the story, John John Henry uh, actually beat the machine. He died. Like, <laughs> like the machine kept running. You know. Major said John Henry, yeah. The machine kept running. He died. He was the best, the fucking strongest black man, you know. Anyway, I shouldn't curse so much if Major's listening, but, you know, I don't think Major minds, you know. But, all right, uh, Kobe says, I wonder how they coded the AI to do this. Yeah, I mean, shit, you know. Like, like, like the thing is this, it was free ground for everybody to do it. But for some reason, only the white boy's doing it, you know. Forecast says, uh, what's up, Oni? Uh, I'm on everybody. Peace, Forecast. Uh... Major says, building development requires dedication to a plan. The plan has been written. We just need to commit to one. And the other is this. Like, again, you need the people. Because you need people develop, develop, de- ah, you need people um, devoted to your plan. Because, like you said, or dedicated to your plan. Because, like you said, Nkrumah had a plan written out. Nkrumah has multiple books. You know, we, we read some on, on, a, on, on the podcast, right? Nkrumah has multiple books. But it don't mean jack shit if other people are in power. If you got an opposition party, they're not reading your books to figure out what to do next. You know? They, what they're reading is the CIA report. You know? <laughs> they're reading the dossier. You know? <laughs> you know, straight, straight out of America. They're reading what America's telling them to do. They're not, you know, well, let me read, uh, let me read uh, Challenges of the Congo. You know? You know? Major says we got to work harder, not smarter. You, uh, you got to work smarter, not harder. That's it. Well, but not everybody's out, not everybody's cut out for it. Most people are working. They working for the for the other man. They working for the other man. Uh, let's see what this. Let's see what the. Let me go on with this thing. Uh, yes, Ghanaians were experiencing economic difficulties before the overthrow of Nkrumah, but those who bore the brunt were the Europeanized Ghanaians living in the big cities and towns who could not get their supplies of Exeter corned beef imported from Argentina. Um, oh, okay. I think this is the. I don't know if it's the same. I don't know if it's the same quote. So let me see. Yes, Ghanaians are experiencing economic difficulties before the overthrow of Nkrumah, but those who bore the brunt were the Europeanized Ghanaians living in the big cities and towns who could not get their supplies of uh, Exeter corned beef, you know, imported from Argentina, peak milk from Holland, Tate and Lyle cube sugar from Britain, St. Louis cube sugar from France, Gaisha or Tinapa from Japan, ship brand and Titus sardines, and worst of all, wheat flour from Europe and North America for making the extremely unhealthy white bread. I Man, hurting on white bread though. However, for the majority of Ghanaian population living in the smaller towns and villages, we saw progress all around us, as evidenced by the building of new roads, clinics, and health centers, and secondary and technical schools under the Ghana Education Trust. Now, again, I want you to remember, remember what I said about Augustine, right? This, oh, I can't even fucking highlight, but you guys get what I'm saying. Exeter. Like, this is somebody's peace, right? This is somebody's peace, and this is somebody's peace, okay? So one person's peace, the Europeanized Ghanaians, if you want to call them that, right? But one person's peace is getting their corned beef from Argentina, getting their milk 
from Holland, getting their sugar from Britain, getting their more sugar from France, <laughs> getting geisha, whatever that is, from Japan, and getting some flour from, you know, getting their white bread on, right? That's somebody's piece, right? And that's a huge pop. That's a population of yours that you got to contend with, you know, because again, you were, you know, these are these are, these are former colonies, right? They they liked getting whatever the white man was getting because the white man liked getting this shit, right? The white man was there. He wasn't in Africa, you know, eating you know, fufu and, you know, no, he was eating, you know, bread and, uh, and, and, and corned beef, right? And, and so the black people around him were eating bread and corned beef too. They were like, I ain't eating no fufu, I'm eating bread and corned beef. Got you. That's okay, right? And so when, 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 when Kwame Nkrumah comes to power, he's like, look, I don't give a shit about your bread and corned beef, right? What, I, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want health centers and roads and clinics, Right? But the people who wanted the bread and, and corned beef are like, look, I don't need health centers, roads, and clinics on the other side of the country. I'm not even on that. I'm not even in the towns and villages, right? Two different populations. Now, both of them have different political interests. Again, you might think, well, they should have the same political interests. No, 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 no. You here's the thing about reality. Reality is this: you looking out for 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 the, for the food on your table. You know what I mean? You look out for the food on your table. So I'll I'll give you an example. Right. Um, if gas prices around me are, 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 are nine dollars a, a, a gallon. Right. But in order for it to be nine dollars a gallon around me, it's it's two dollars a gallon around you. Right. I'm not going to. And, you know, and then, and then my and then the politician, the political party in power says we're doing a good job because it's two dollars. It's two dollars a gallon for 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 for, for, for you know. For, for whomever else, right? Well, let's say Matron, right? It's $2 a gallon for Matron. It's $2 a gallon for Kofi, right? So we're doing good, right? It might be $9 a gallon for, for Oni, but it's $2 a gallon for Kofi, and it's $2 a gallon for, for, for Matron, and it's $2 a gallon for Forecast, and so on and so forth, right? Okay, you might be like, well, um, damn, Oni, why don't you just vote for that party? That party's doing some good shit. Now, you were saying that, but I'm paying $9. <laughs> like, like I, I, don't, I don't mean nothing for me. You know what I'm saying? Now, 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 it might take a, it might take a, uh, it might take a, 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 a good African to be like, and I'm not saying I'm not a good African. I mean, it just might take a, a certain individual, certain type of character to be like, well, you know what? If, uh, if Lero got two dollars a gallon, right? You know, Matron got two dollars a gallon. If they got two dollars a gallon, you know, it's, it's, it's not that bad. You know, I might have to spend nine dollars, but it, it's fine. It's not that bad. But in reality, right? When, 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 when them $9 hit me, right? And it's not like I'm, I'm spending $9 because I'm rich, right? It's been, I'm spending $9 and I'm now like, shit, I got to feed my son with, 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 you know, we all got 20 bucks. You guys feed, a, you guys feed your kid with 18. I got to feed my kid with 11, right? All of a sudden, I'm just like, well, shit, I, 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 I kind of want something. And then somebody else comes along and says, look, Oni, we can put your shit down to $2, right? And then, you, then now they might say, well, everybody else is going to get like $4 or, or $9 or whatever. But like, what do you want me to do? You know? And that's really the big question. Because if I'm living a... Because again, everybody has a lifestyle. Right? Everybody has a lifestyle that they want to... Um, that they want. You know? Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Not everybody has a lifestyle that they want. No, matter of fact, everybody does have a lifestyle that they want. Or that they desire. Right? And then they have a lifestyle that they have. Okay? Or even a lifestyle that they lost or had the potential to lose. And so these Ghanaians living in the cities and towns, they are losing the lifestyle that they desired or the lifestyle that, that they had, right? And the people who are gaining are the small towns and villages. And, and for the Ghanaian in the, in the city, again, you have to be a certain type of African, right? Because like, like me personally, I'm like, shit, I do not give a fuck about these cities. Like I want to leave New York City right now. You understand? <laughs> like, I, I do. You know, I don't know if I want to live in a village, per se, but I wouldn't mind living in a village. You know, I, I don't mind. You know what I mean? Shit, I, I do like the internet. But again, like, if I'm losing the internet and then somebody else come along, I mean, it's it's complicated. But I want you to really grasp that while we're looking at that. But anyway, um, let me see what the comments are like before I get in trouble. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Forecast says, you might need to move closer to us. Nah, man. Nah, I like, I like where I'm living, man. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I'm probably in the south or some shit, man. <laughs> I'm joking. I, actually, forecast next door. <laughs> uh, anyway, let me see. Uh, y'all might be like in the south, living a pretty good life. But I don't know. I, I mean, I don't even know why I would have to spend more than y'all. 
<laughs> they're going to just charge me more. Uh, but anyway, but right. It's important to note that no country in the world um, has industrialized without sacrifice by its population. We can, in all honesty, only compare conditions in Ghana during Nkrumah's industrialization drive with other countries during similar stages of their development. I challenge any of Nkrumah's critics to provide evidence which shows that conditions Ghanaians lived under during Nkrumah's industrialization drive was f any worse than during the Industrial Revolution in the England. Uh, for those not aware, the free education some of us enjoyed under Nkrumah while growing up as teenagers should be compared with the following British Committee of Parliament report in 1832 on child labor during the Industrial Revolution. So this is a report. He says, and so you should put quotation marks again. So he says, at what time in the morning in the brisk time did these girls go to the mill, the cotton mills? A, the answer, in the brisk time for about six weeks, they have gone at three o'clock in the morning and ended at 10 or nearly half past at night. What intervals were allowed for rest and refreshment during those 19, 19 hours? What the fuck? See, I didn't do the math, but... <laughs> funny yo. anyway <laughs> he just casually said 19 hours man like shit boy all right so let me see this again 3 a.m okay so it's a three because i was like three to ten that's not bad i thought it was like seven hours i mean it's not good but <laughs> 19 fucking hours okay 19 hour work day like what the fuck all right so <laughs> i'm sorry that's fu that's that's fucked up all right. All right. Anyway, but I said six weeks, so it's not. I mean, they're little girls, but <laughs> the fuck is wrong with these crackers? Yeah. All right. So anyway, nineteen dollars. Uh, but as I'm saying, like, like that's, that's like the, the cost of freedom. Now I'm saying you don't have to remember. <laughs> I'm sorry, nineteen. Like you look, you work at little girls <laughs> for nineteen fucking hours. Like you fucking lunatic. All right. So um uh, obviously you don't have to industrialize in the same way the white boy did. <laughs> Like, you don't need to work black folk for 19 damn hours just to, that's what they did. Now, nah, I mean, there's some things that, you know, what technology advances today, you know, you don't have to do that shit. But anyway, uh, so yeah, he says, uh, <laughs> 19 hours. So what intervals were allowed for rest and refreshment during the 19 hours? Uh, breakfast, a quarter of an hour, dinner, half an hour, and drinking, a quarter of an hour. <laughs> they got like an hour total. Was any of the time taken up in the cleaning of machinery? They generally had to do what they call dry down. Sometimes this took the whole time at breakfast or drinking. Shit, boy. Yo, 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 what? So <laughs> they, were, they were cleaning during their breaks. That's stupid. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's fucked up, man. All right. I, I don't know how to respond to that. Like, what the fuck? All right. Had you not great difficulty in awakening your children to the excessive labor? Yes, in the early time, we had to take them up asleep and shake them. What the fuck? Had any of them any accident in consequence of this labor? Yes, my eldest daughter. My eldest daughter. <laughs> Wait, what? Hey, he's not oh, my gosh. Yeah, I tell you, man. This motherfucker is ruthless. All right. What? <laughs> This is like a comedy skit today. Uh, anyway, so yeah, labor laws. Um, anyway, yes, my eldest daughter. And this is what I'm trying to tell you, man. Like, this is what these white boys were doing in 1832 to their own women. Why do you, why do you think that, why, why wouldn't slavery be a, 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 like, a, like torture? You know, why wouldn't it be? But anyway, uh, had you had a great difficulty in awakening your children to the excess of labor? He says, uh, yes, my eldest daughter, the cog caught her forefinger nail and screwed it off below the knuckle. Whew. Has she lost the finger? It is cut off at the second joint. Were her wages paid during that time? As soon as the accident happened, the wages were totally stopped. Okay. All right. Oh, shit. So, yeah. So, that's the, that's the reason why people like socialists, by the way. Because <laughs> socialists are supposed to make capitalism more palatable. Uh, this is the kind of raw... Um, industrial capitalism that nobody uh, like nobody really likes. I mean, this man did it to his own daughter. I, I want y'all to I want y'all to process that. So this is the this is clearly the owner of the fucking business. He's like like he's working his own daughter, which is fucking crazy. Um, yeah. So like yeah, like what, like expecting them not to torture your ancestors is like, you know, come on. Like, like, you can only imagine how bad colonization was if this is what they were doing to their own fucking daughters. Their own daughters. Now, like, I'm not saying, like, somebody else's daughter. I'm not saying their own daughter is, like, 
figuratively like this is what they're doing to the women of their race no i'm saying this is what they're doing to their own fucking daughters like like his his own flesh and blood you know his, his yeah it's it's crazy that's crazy like he stopped paying his, <laughs> his own daughter like what okay all right it was not until 1819 the employment of children under nine was prohibited in cotton mills uh under nine <sighs> like okay so my kid yeah all right yeah okay I mean, just like, yeah. In 1833, a 48 to 69 hour week was decreed for workers under 18 who comprised about 75% of all cotton mill workers. In 1842, children under 10 were barred from coal mine. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's, like, you gotta remember that they have labor laws now for themselves, but them going to your continent and, and like, if you don't have labor laws, that's on you. You get what I'm saying? That's on you. In 1847, and it's not just on you, really, because, again, they destroyed your fucking political structure, so they create the fucking um, laws, but like, if, you, if you're not, you know, if you can't fight them, you can't fight them, right? But, um, yeah, it's really important for us to be able to fight for ourselves and also have a conception of what's right. But anyway, 1847, a 10-hour daily limit, uh, later raised to 10 and a half, was set for children and women. Okay, so um, we're going we're gonna to just look at the chat um, real quickly to see if anybody was a uh, thing. Uh, so what's the middle ground or compromise to make? Uh, oh, regarding to the, the, the situation. I mean, again, like, you, like realistically, you got to fucking kill the people who aren't happy with the progress, with the, with the general progress, you know? Like, the people who are only looking out for themselves, you, you, have, to, you have to kill them. You know what I mean? So, I mean, you have to, you have to kill them or, you have to, or they have to learn to suck it up. Like, like for instance, you got you to, gotta, like, if, if it really was the case that everybody else and this chat was getting better, you know, was living good, and I'm the only one suffering, and I'm not okay with that, that's like, you know, you got to come to me and be like, look, Oni, you got to be okay with this, or we're going to fucking kill you, you know, because you're not going to cause trouble later down the line for us, you know what I mean? Like, we can't afford you having trouble later down the line, you know what I mean? And that's, that's what it is. Like, that's really, like, you really have to, and I mean, I mean, obviously, I'm not, I mean, I would never be on the Ascari side, so I don't know what the fuck's going on. Like, this is a, a bad scenario. But, but what I'm saying is that when it comes to the Ascari, like, in reality, in the real world, when it comes to the Ascari, you, you know, you can't, like, like that's, what, that's what the guy was saying last week, Nintendo was saying last week, you know? You have to fucking kill the Nazis. Right? If you're, if you're not happy with the new regime, like, even America, I told you guys, even America, if you were like a British, if you were a British sympathizer, they said you cannot work, you cannot find the housing, you cannot, like, like, here's the thing, they had to kill the motherfucking Native Americans. You understand? The white man had to kill the Native Americans. I don't like the fact that he killed them, but he had to, if he wanted to take the land. You understand? If the white man wanted to live peacefully in America, he had to kill this, this Native American. Because the Native American will would not give up his land. It's unfortunate that we come to this country and we're like, you know what? It's fine. You know, you could have the land, white man. Right? It's sad that even in Africa, you know, the white man comes to, our, come to the country and we're like, oh, it's fine. You could have the land, white man. But the Native American, because he said he will not give up fighting, the white man said, okay, we'll, we'll have to kill you. And I'm not saying that black folk, black folk didn't keep fighting. Because a lot of black folk did keep fighting. And that's why a lot of black folk are not, like, they don't exist anymore. You know, a lot of, uh, like, some of us pe might come from, like, sometimes we say to ourselves, hey, we came from this tribe or that tribe. It could be that your tribe was wiped out. You know what I'm It could be you the last of your fucking tribe. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like when, when you get the, 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 the genetics test and it comes back, oh, well, you, you know, you from Ghana, you from this region, or, or that, that, that's the, the closest relationship that you have in, in, in the real world. It could be that, that your group was wiped out. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, you know, you know I don't, I don't want to really talk about that though. Um, yeah, for example, says Europeans were living rough. Yeah, they were motherfucking crazy. Uh, Major says, perhaps all nations have exploitative labor practices during their development process. You can treat your labor as well and develop simultaneously internal communalism 
and external capitalism. Exactly. You know, and and again, it's like I think white people generally have exploitative uh, um, practices, and you don't need to have exploitative practices, right? You just need to, because at the end of the day, all you really need to focus on is the final product. Now, granted, if you were running a factory for 16 hours versus running a factory for eight hours, um, and you're underpaying people for 16 hours versus overpaying people for eight hours, right? Um, you know, obviously, the the one that's under, like the one that's underpaying and and running for 16 hours or whatever is is going to be more profitable and it's going to be more productive, right? But you don't have to be um, that profitable and productive if it's at the expense of humans, or if it's at the expense of your people's well-being. You know, if it's, if it's if it means that a little girl has to lose her fucking finger for her life, right? It, it's not that serious. You know, you can produce things. You 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 produce the cars. You produce the uh, the, the, the scientific instruments, you produce the computers, you produce the phones, and you produce it in eight hours, you know, or you produce it in 16 hours with two different sets of uh, people. You, and, and the thing is that it's already been shown, right, that you can do it for eight hours. So, uh, you know, what the early capitalists were thinking, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily translate to uh, today's technology and today's uh, scale. Because, again, one of the things we have to remember about that point in time was that the population was much less than it is today. You know what I mean? Like, the population was much less than it is today. Uh, like, 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 horrendously less. In fact, I want to, I actually want to just, like, because, like, that might actually help. So we're talking about 1819 um, London, right? My thing is I don't like searching things, <laughs> right, when, we, when, we, when, when people could uh, possibly, uh, you know, uh, you know, like when searches... You know, can 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 I don't know, but but like eighteen thirty. Let me see, eighteen nineteen London population, right? Let's just pretend, right? Versus what's the population of today? So yeah, in eighteen nineteen, the population of London. Actually, let me just search it in front of you guys because that's not even. That's not. It's like it's it's not gonna show anything anyway. Uh, the thing is that you don't want to accidentally, um, show something. Not that I would have anything. It's just, you know, just generally speaking. So 1819 was like 1.4 million people in London, right? Now, if you were to check out the London population today, right, it's 8.9 million, right? So 9 million people versus 1.4 million people. So it's like the labor pool is is that much more extensive. Now, granted, you have many less, um, uh, like, available people in the sense because... You know, everybody else is already employed, especially in London. But the point being that, you know, like at least then, like like again, like like the factors there would be, hey, you have a limited pool. You have people who are not familiar with machinery. All this machinery is brand new. Nowadays, that's not the thing. It's not the case. You know, um, it's it's not the case. People are familiar with machinery. It's not machinery, but you know, like you might not be familiar with how to freaking run a machines, but you know. It, it, it's it's different. Like what I'm saying is that you don't need to. You're not under the same sort of physical constraints that they would have been under in the uh, 18th century or whatever, or 19th century. So that said, you wouldn't necessarily have to be as exploitative. Um, forecast was agreeing with Matron and Owl come through. He says 16 hour workday loses efficiency, even the traditional five day work week is inefficient. Yeah, and the thing is, you could make your own weeks. Like I personally like the 10 day week. And I would probably like, yeah, you probably limit it to like six days of work for every 10 days or some shit. You know, you could do that. It's not even like you, like whatever it is, whatever it takes to just keep people gainfully employed as well as producing things. You know, whatever it takes, you can do it. You have that freedom, you know? And the reality that, and, and, and you could tell that people have that freedom because they went from a 16 hour work day and like seven days a week to, uh, f- you know, forty-hour workday. You know what I mean? Like, like they, 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 like they have the freedom to change their own workdays. So, so, so do we. You know, they have the freedom to to adopt their own calendars. So do we. And that's like realistically what we have to process. So he says, look, um, he says, nor is the change, uh, is the charge that Nkrumah suppressed all fundamental liberties in 
under his rule with the, a one-party system any worse than during the period of industrialization by the advanced countries. In Britain, for instance, after the Reform Bill of 1832, only 10% of the adult population had the vote, and it was not until 1918 that there was universal manhood suffrage. Women had to wait till 1928 in Britain for women's suffrage. The United States system was built on slavery and women's suffrage established in 1920 and blacks in 18, 1965. Okay, I think blacks had a vote a little earlier than 1965, but I can see what he means about they didn't, like, you know, there was uh, a lot of barriers until 1965. But anyway, considering the hardships which ordinary uh, people had to endure for the present political and economic systems in the advanced countries to be fully established to enable them to deliver what we see the, today, the question that should be uppermost in the mind of the reader is whether poor people would willingly have voted for an economic transformation which would have yielded a payout only after 40 or more years. What the citizens of the industrialized countries are enjoying today, both political and economic, is the outcome of the sacrifices of their forebears together with the ruthless exploitation of other people in their former colonies. Tell it. All right. It is also worthy of note that the recent industrialized Southeast Asian countries, Singapore, South Korea, and Taiwan, cannot be said to have been more democratic than Nkrumah's Ghana. In conclusion, I would like quote verbatim Mr. Lee Kuan Yew's letter of the 11th of March, 1966, to Nkrumah while in exile in Guinea. Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, a very good friend of Nkrumah, was the first prime minister of Singapore, who transformed Singapore from a third world country to a first world. He was invited by Nkrumah to Ghana as one of the foreign dignitaries for the inauguration of the Volta Dam that, would, that was to have catalyzed Ghana's industrial development but was sabotaged by the NLC. He says, look... <clears throat> I have taken two weeks to compose my thought to tell you how disturbed I was at the shocking news of what took place in Accra as soon as, as so soon after we last met. I visited Ghana twice, and I do not believe that political changeover has written finish to the chapter of what has gone before. I do not know what exactly happened, nor how things will turn out, but I am sure you know that there are many people who wish Ghana and you all the best. The Ghanaians are a vigorous and lively people, and they deserve all the vision and leadership which you have strove to give them. Uh, to make Ghana into a strong, modern part of Africa, of an Africa whose unity you have always espoused. My colleague, Rajat Manam, and I remember your kindness to us and your support for Singapore and would like to express our sympathy for you in the moment of distress. May you may what you stand for, a united Africa and a great Ghana, triumph and flourish. Nkrumah had a vision of Ghana as illustrated by an objective third party who shared notes with Nkrumah and turned his country from the third world into the first world. But alas, the myopic NLC and the self-seeking enemies of Nkrumah would not see the forest from the trees and thus sabotage our industrialization drive, which had led to our present economic mess. So, I mean, this article was not that great, but it was good. I mean, it kind of tells you, hey, look, um, this is the author's interests are chemical and biological, so on and so forth. So, um, it's not that great in the sense of what, um, but like, yeah, Nkrumah was trying to do something. Apparently he was esteemed by even the, uh, Singapore president or prime minister, but, um, uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, I think that's actually not, I mean, it, it didn't end in a great note for me to really add much more to it, but, uh, what can we learn from this? Um, but yeah, I, I mean, uh, sorry, sorry, the thing you learn from this, again, the thing you would learn from this is this. Win. Win, you know? Win by any means necessary, you know? If 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 Nkrumah were, I don't think Nkrumah was a tyrant or he was suppressive. And I'm not, again, I'm not even a fan of Nkrumah. But if he had won, if he had, if the coup was resisted successfully, if the NLC was successfully crushed and, and, and he remained in power, right? It's possible. It's very likely Ghana would be somewhere different. You know? It's very likely. And that's what it really comes down to. You must win. Right? And you might say, well, you know, well, what about the civil liberties and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, what about them? You know? What, what about them? If, if you are serious about the development of your people, what about civil liberties? You understand? We are, we are humans, right? What are humans? They're animals, okay? What are animals, right? We're just this, these beings, these, these, these groups of, these communities of individuals, right, that are trying to carve out a better life on this planet Earth, right? Some people are looking out of space. Okay, that's fine. But we're just trying to carve out a better existence on this planet Earth, right? That's it. It's not that much more complicated. Whether you can hurt an animal or not, Right. Is is not it's not a real question. As humans, we we're, we're we're constantly eating other life forms. 
Like we do this daily to survive. You know, daily, on a daily basis, we are eating other life forms, whether they be plants, whether they be, um, you know, fruits, nuts. Well, not, I don't know, I don't know, nuts, but yeah. Uh, nuts, I don't know. Right, nuts or <laughs> whatever. Um, and we're eating, uh, you know, meat. Right? We're eating animals, right? You know, you saw in the video, you saw the cows and all that kind of stuff. I, I want you to grasp that, you know, this, this notion of, well, and again, I'm not saying, and I'm not, I wouldn't encourage you to abuse or hurt anybody. But what I do want you to understand is that if you are existing in a state of opposition, but you, but that opposition is against what I would say is my, let's say, if that opposition is against that, that righteous path, right? And I don't mean righteous in the pseudo spiritualist or the pseudo religious sense. I mean, if you are really trying to develop, and again, what is, what is right? What is right? But if we are really about carving out a destiny for African people, right, that puts us on the fourth, like puts us on the top of the human pyramid instead of the bottom, right? If it puts us on the top of the human pyramid, then let's go for it. And the people who do not want to be at the top of the human pyramid, who do not want the black race to be at the top of the human pyramid, you can cut off their fucking heads. Okay? Just like you do a chicken. I want you to understand that. I want you to understand that. Because if you do not cut their heads off, you know what happens? They cut off your head. So what happens to Nkrumah? Hey, they say, get the fuck out of the country. Right? You're gone. And guess what? Everything you freaking built, everything you put together, right, is done. And now your people are sitting around begging and buying and not trying, but dying. Let's rhyme. We're rhyming. <laughs> I, want you, I, want, I want you to process that. It's, it's kill or be killed. It's eat or be eaten. Right? You're in the jungle. You're in the jungle. You might not, you might be, no, I'm not in the jungle. You're in the jungle. Forecast says, once you control means of production in the market, it goes a long way to get the cost of living you want and better value of life you can create. Of course. You know? Of course. Uh, you know, you, you, you have to, you have to get into that. And when you're in that position, you have to stay in that position. Because if you do not stay in that position, people will dismantle your shit. Because the thing is this, the white man, right? I shouldn't even say he's a man. He's a, he's, a, he's a man, or whatever, right? He wants to dismantle what you have. Because see, cause see, you want to be on top of the human pyramid. No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, forecast, yes. Forecast wants to be on the top of the human pyramid, right? But a, black, a lot of black folk don't care to be on the top of the human pyramid. You know who does care about being on the top of the human pyramid? The whites. The white elites. They're like, let me be on the top of the human pyramid. You know who cares about being on the top of the human pyramid? The Chinese. That's why, that's why I like the Chinese. Because they're not white, and they, and they want to be on the top of the human pyramid, right? And, and Russians, they're like, you know what? We can be on the top of the human pyramid. That's fine, right? Like, why the fuck got to be these Americans? Let's be on the top of the human pyramid, right? Now, you as an African have to say, I want to be on the top of the human pyramid. For whatever, whatever nations I represent, because I, I, I call about multinationalism. You say, look, I want Tanzania. I want Congo. I want Ghana. Let's be on the top. Let, let's, share the, let's share the top. Anyway, Matron says civil liberties are only for winners. Win at all costs. That's it. You know, the, the, the people who the people who are trying to destroy you and erase you and take you out. Right. Destroy, erase and take them out. You know, you remember that Mad TV skip the Mad TV. This is this, this, this skip between. Uh, I think it's like I don't even know what it's called, but I think it's like a. I don't know. I don't even know. I don't know if it has a name, honestly. But they used to have like these cartoons of this, this black. I don't know. I guess he's a spy. I think it's called Spy versus Spy, maybe. I don't know. But it's like a black spy and a white spy, and they both they both look the same. They just dress different, and 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 the whole thing is that they just trying to destroy each other, and one of them comes out on top. You know, that's that's how you have to be. You know, it's not like uh, I think I think Simpsons had something like that too, where it's uh, I think it's no, it's not Tom and Jerry. But like Tom and Jerry, well, Jerry always wins, and then and then in Simpsons, uh, they also had like Itchy and Scratchy, and I think Scratchy always wins. But like in in, in the Man TV skit, it was the it was the uh, like like neither neither one always won. I don't know, I don't remember because I didn't really watch Man TV. But 
Um, but neither of them always won. And that's the thing that you got to know, too. That, like, whoever, but somebody has to win. But you got you to gotta, you gotta contest and you got to outsmart, outthink the other person. You got to know what they're going to do when you do X, Y, Z. When you do X, Y, Z, you got to know what the ABC that they're going to do. And when they do that, finally, you hook them and you get rid of them. And the only thing that's different about this spy versus spy thing is this, that whoever wins, wins. You understand? For, 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 for a moment. Not, not forever, but for a moment. I want, I want to, uh, let me see what the comments are. Uh, Fuckhead says, you can't be as smart as you want to be, but at some point you have to punch somebody trying to take your stuff in the face. Always. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, and, and it's the reality. You know, this is reality. If I, if I, I'll tell y'all. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, this, uh, I was at this bar, this woman, uh, woman was, uh, you know, I saw this cute lady, and so I was, uh, I was trying to talk to her. And then, uh, Another lady come out of nowhere and says, that's my girlfriend you're talking to. And I said, okay, I don't give a fuck. No, I didn't say that. I said, okay. I said, okay. And then she's all, move and leave, you know, and get up, stop. You know, and I'm like, look, I, I'll stop talking to the lady in front of you, right? <laughs> but, like, you know, I'm not going to be pushed around by you. But I realized that, like, if it was a, if it was like a, like, sometimes if it's a big dude, you're like, yeah, okay, all right, I'll, I'll back up. You know, because I ain't got it. I ain't got no smoke. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is that, yeah, like, sometimes you got to punch somebody in the face. Like, if somebody's talking to your girl, right? Maybe, if that's if that's what you want to do, you know. But maybe, uh, you, you know, sometimes the peaceful, you know, hey man, uh, would you stop talking to my girl? You know, yeah, man, no problem. But uh, would, would you scoot over so I can say a little wor more words to her? If that's what you want to go through, fine. But it, it could be, you know, like like you're gonna have to realize that somebody else's peace might not be your version of peace, and you have to bring the war. Your brother Bakari came through. Brother Bakari says, peace and black power. Just got the notification. Appreciate you coming through, bro. Um, and then let's see. Uh, Owl says, false. Every human wants to be on the top of the pyramid. The difference between the whites, Chinese, is their sense of nationalism. Our sense of pride and unity was stripped from us. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Then. Kofi says, LOL. Uh, lesbian stole your girl. Nah, it was her girl. I wasn't. Nah, lesbian ain't still my girl. I was Like, she was, she was already taken. I had no idea. You know what I'm saying? Like, again, man, I, I just came through, like, you know. I don't even know, man. Like, this, America's different, man. I, I ain't never seen so many fucking lesbians and transgenders. <laughs> like, I'm just like, yeah, that's, why, that's why I say you got to leave. You got to leave in order to see what you're supposed to be seeing. You know? Sometimes you got to leave in order to see what you're supposed to be seeing. Uh, yeah, I always says everybody wants to be on the, no, not everybody wants to be on the top. Some people, all right, even if people want to be on the top, they want to share the top with another race. You know what I'm saying? So, like, African Americans want to be on the top. You know, like, ADOS wants to be on the top, but they want to share the top with the white Americans. You get what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, exactly. Brother McCarty, exactly. Brother McCarty, right. Jenna, what my ass? Because cause I'm telling you, because I, cause I thought the lady was joking because I already got the number. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I was like, I'm like, I don't know if she's joking with me that this is her girl because her girl already gave me the fucking number. Like, I, I don't know. Like, okay. Uh, that's cool. You know? But, uh, you know, like, I'm not even whatever. Abajan says, I'm glad I'm not American. And sh uh, But anyway, Owl says, uh, yeah. So, like, some people want to share the top of the pyramid. Or even, or even this. I want, I want to, like, I, I, because I think it's, I don't want to give people the credit of saying they want to be on the top. You know? De like, some people want to be the middleman. You know? The people who took out Nkrumah, they're not looking to supersede the white man. Right, or, or even, look, I'll say it this way. If they were looking to supersede, because I'll give, uh, if, I will, if what I was saying is true, that the people who destroyed um, Ghana's educational capacity, right, and, you know, pretty much sold out Ghana, or just like how, nah, 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 in fact, nah, I can't, I can't even, I will, I can't even, I can't even do it. I can't, I can't, because I, I can't see how they want to be on the top of the pyramid. You know, I can't see it. I can't see how the, the traders and the Ascari want them. Because what happened with Pantheon? Pantheon sold out Haiti to France. And even Toussaint was fighting so that France could be a colony, and so Haiti could be a colony of France. Now, maybe you could say, maybe in some way you could say, well, being a colony of France is still the top. I don't think so, though. I think that's the middle. I don't think that's the top. You know what Dessalines was doing? I'm going to be the empire of freedom, the empire of liberty. That's the top. So I don't, I don't know if every human wants to be on the top of the pyramid. I think some people are satisfied with being on the middle. And that's one of the problems with us as a black race, because sometimes you have people who want to be on the top. 
See, Nkrumah wanted to be on the top, right? And I mean, unfortunately, Nkrumah was sabotaging the other nations, but I get it. You want to be on the top, you got to you gotta, you gotta be on the top. But, uh, yeah, I, I, and like I said, you want to win by any means. But, but, but that's not like, like, again, that's not like, yeah, that's neither here nor there. But anyway, yeah, 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 I'm glad, yeah, America's weird. Like, a dating scene in America is just like, it's like weird, you know? But anyway, that's pretty much uh, the whole of it. I do want to say, if y'all don't know, uh, Cassandra Cheeks is, is on right now, so we could check that out. But other than that, Shemim Hotep, thanks everybody for coming through. I don't know if anybody else has any comments. But thanks, everybody, for coming through. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, make sure you guys check out Cassidra. She's, she's actually just came on right now. Uh, shit, forecast right. Some people some people covered up on the bottom. You know? Uh, like, you know, like some people is comfortable not producing nothing. Like not producing nothing. You know, it's sad. Like, it's really sad. You know, in fact, I got some people hitting me up from, 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 from Tanzania still. Like, hey, I, can you give me some money so I can eat? In fact, I actually had somebody hit me up in America talking about that. Like, hey, I need, I don't got no, like, ah. Oh. Like, I can't even tell y'all about some of the stuff I, <laughs> the people I associated with, but like, ah. Oh. Like, this country, this country, in America particularly, it's just, it's just sad. Like, what happened to our people is just really sad here in America. But like, even abroad, like, people are not trying to win. I, I want us to get on the top. I want us to get on the top. But um, other than that, thank you. Kofi says good stream, so that means it's good. So, uh, Asante Shana for everybody. Uh, but how, like I say, Shemim Hotep, Anku Ja, Seneb Neb, Amen, Ma'at, Dua Nature. All right.